Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Big Brother 22 Roundtable Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and this is the podcast where we talk about everything from the feeds and rate all the players from 1 to 10. Joining me today is Brent. How you doing, Brent? I'm doing great, and I got some spicy ratings. As I revealed on Twitter, I've given six of the house guests no higher than a three in any of my ratings. I am not very happy with some of the play this week, and I think it's all about to be blown up to smithereens. (laughs) There you go. Also joining us tonight is Lavina. How are you doing, Lavina? Hi, everybody. You guys can call me the bootleg Melissa for the night. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Um... Yeah, but I've got big shoes to fill. Obviously, I'm super pumped to be here. Super honored. It's one of my favorite shows for years. So super excited. The main question I have for you, are you frustrated? (laughs) Aaron, so remember when we did a live feed update? I feel the same way, but like kind of worse. Okay, okay. (laughs) uh, when When you're filling Melissa's shoes, I think it's important to know whether or not you're frustrated. Um, All right, so... We are here. We're going to talk about everything that's been going on this week. It's been an interesting week, uh, I think, especially for me, the way I watch the show. Um, It's been very, uh, very interesting. There's been a power struggle that's been going on behind the scenes. Uh, Some new targets are arising. Some people's games are crashing. Um, And uh, there's some uh, some outside interference that uh, is actually causing a feed outage right now. Um, So... uh, (laughs) Did you think it was the feed outage? Uh, the, the, the outside interference? I thought it was like they literally saw a rat in the backyard. Oh, no, no, no. no. Is that fake news? The, so the feeds are down right now because somebody got uh, caught by security trying to wall yell uh, just now. Somebody was tweeting ah. about it beforehand. Okay. Um, and, uh, and Don't tweet about it beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the first thing they tweeted was, oh, crap, I was about to wall yell and security saw me. Um, uh-huh. So uh, feeds are down. And Ian was very upset uh, in the bedroom saying that now he said something along the lines of like, they're not going to get to go outside for at least another week. Um, so they are going to be trapped inside for a while now because people can't behave themselves, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can I just say that I've been back there before? My sister and I drove back there once, and I, I wish I wall yell. I'm not gonna lie. I want that. I'm gonna want that life experience. I think it was during Big Brother 18, but. Yeah. All right. That well, was a good season though. It wasn't a frustrating season like this has become, or like 19. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, uh, 18 at least had movement back and forth. Exactly. Brent, I remember. I remember your attitude during Big Brother 18 when Paul I mean, was I running the love house. Nicole. I liked Paul. I loved Paul and I loved Victor. <laughs> when Paul, the when Paul he was running the house, yeah, uh, that's true. Brent was doom and gloom and I he would have very much it? welcomed a wall yeller. Exactly. Lavina said it. Who who wasn't? Like, come on. Like, it wasn't like I was alone in that uh, opinion. Come on. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, Let's talk about what's been happening this week on the feeds. Um, we had an Enzo HOH, uh, unfortunately, Kaser, just just missed it. Don't want to dwell on that too much. Uh, he puts up Kaser and Kevin. Kevin wins the veto. Christmas volunteers and is now the pawn next to Kaser. Kaser will be going home this week. Uh, it doesn't seem like anything is capable of changing that. Um, and that's basically where we are right now in terms of this week. Um, but uh, but Brent, how have you been feeling about, uh, about the week so far? Uh, I mean, this is one of those weeks where what's happening this week has no relevance to what's actually happening this week. Like, Kaser's mm-hmm. going home, sure, no one gives a f about that they really don't care it's like it's such a fait accompli like so they're literally waiting for this week to be over so they can evict caser and move on to the second portion of the game where things get a little bit more interesting depending on who wins hoh that's where we're at right now and uh like uh, caser uh dude you're gonna hear about it from me in the stock watch but god damn if you had just been able to sit on your ass a little bit and try to play a little bit dead try to blend in with the populace a little bit and try just to not get in people's hair and tell them what's up and make big moves all the time and try to make big moves. I think you would have had a shot to stay this week based on the dynamics of the house, but uh, it was not meant to be. I mean, what do I always say about Kaser? He literally just can't help himself. I'm, I say this every podcast that I've been on this season, Kaser cannot help himself. And I think another thing too, like, you know, piggybacking off of what Brent said, I was listening to a previous podcast. I forgot which day it was. Taryn, you mentioned how like, 
the modern game is never like a present game. It's always what's going to happen the next couple of weeks. And I feel like that's exactly what we're seeing now. It's just kind of like things are getting so blown up and we just, I guess it is a little bit more exciting when you look at it that way, when you're like, we don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. So I think that's what we're looking forward to right now. Yeah. I mean, you're not playing very well if you're making a decision week to week. Like you're playing, mm-hmm. you're playing well if the if the move has already been decided and that's the week and you're playing for the next week while other people, aka Kaser and Janelle, are playing in the week, not realizing that the week has already been lost and they're just spinning their wheels and not making any progress anywhere. Um, and not realizing that they shouldn't be spinning their wheels. That was Janie's problem in the first week that she stuck her neck out for Keisha when she shouldn't have. Second week, she stuck her neck out for Nicole. She shouldn't have. Like if they had known ahead of time, okay, look, we've lost this week. We, we have to take the L it's done and we can't do anything about it, but they just couldn't help themselves. They couldn't help themselves, which is why we love them. I get it. So whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, week one, Kaser and Janelle tried to rally votes to keep Keisha. They tried to get people like Bailey and Christmas and Devon. It didn't work. Week two, they tried to rally votes to save Nicole Anthony. They tried to get votes like Bailey, Devon, Christmas. It didn't work. Week three, Janelle and Kaser on the block. Janelle tried to get votes like Bailey, Devon, Christmas. It didn't work. This week, Kaser's on the block. He's trying to get votes like Bailey, Devon. When are you going to learn that this is not the game that's being played? When yeah. are we going to finally start to change up our our, our, our approach here? Because yeah. it's not working. That's honestly the truest thing you ever said was when K- you were talking about Kaser and you said that he is trying to play the kind of game that he wants to play, the kind of game that he wishes was being played in the Big Brother house right now, not the game that is in front of him. And that is the biggest indictment I've ever heard on somebody's game, that they're not being present by trying to play what lies directly in front of them instead basically living in the past in a game that simply doesn't exist in the house as it currently stands. And uh, he's going to pay the price for it this week by being evicted, probably 10 to 0. Yeah, and it's like he's seeing all this stuff. He's like saying he's getting a like kind of decent reads on the house. He's like, there's a big power structure. I forgot who he was talking to, but um, he's seeing all these things. But again, he he can't. He doesn't know how to play it in a way that he doesn't like want to play it. Similarly to what Brent said, like he it's just not. He's not going to budge. Yeah, um, it's he 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 just he had the same approach. He's had the same approach for four weeks, um, and it it has he's he's just he keeps trying to hammer the. See, here's the thing. You, you know who that sounds like? That sounds like me, honestly. <laughs> because it sounds like me in Sequester. Seriously, because I played Sequester. For those of you who don't know, I played Sequester. I played it over and over and over again, and I played it the same way. I played big moves right out, coming out of the gate. Who hot as you know what, hot as you know what. Oh my God, I played so hard. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna just keep beating my head against the wall knowing, because I know it's about to happen. Like I'm about to come out of it like hot as you know what. And then like, I'm gonna get evicted or eliminated in like five rounds because people are gonna have it up to here with me because I'm gonna be saying too many names and getting into too much trouble. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna try and play it a little bit smarter and just be a little bit more low key and like, that was the one time I actually made jury. And like, I, I saw people on Twitter, Mel Holst, uh, one of the life feed updaters was like, does Brent actually have yeah. a social game right now? Like, I mean, like at least I knew that I needed to like reel it back in Taryn. Even Kaser doesn't understand well, that he was needs that to reel it back fourth, in. Was that your fourth try? Cause he's only had three. Yes. It's my fourth try. Yes. So maybe on his next go, Kaser yes. would actually do well. Maybe. I would hope. I would hope they also would cast him with some other targets and some other pairs. I do think that it was a little unfair of them to put like, you know, and I know they didn't plan it this way. I know they had Tyler and Casey and Josh were supposed to be there with Christmas, but it ended up only being Janie and Kaser. That's yeah. only pair, that's the only real pair that people saw together, even though Cody and Franzel are obviously, you know, really close together. And uh, it just was never going to happen this year. Never going to happen. I mean, even I just, then, even then, I feel like if Danny hadn't stabbed Janelle in the back, like Janelle would have been. I, I really feel like Janelle would. I got been things fine. to say about Danny. Uh, <laughs> don't we all? Don't we all? I, w- I was just gonna say that I just I still don't understand how they they're not clocking Nicole F and um and Cody together. If they, I mean, the only person who clocked it is the wall yeller. Now they're just kind of like, oh, maybe that's true because someone from the outside screamed it over the freaking wall. 
Well, possibility. That, that's, that's the thing, though. I think that they had a more accurate read on Cody and Nicole being together before the wall yeller, because so let's talk about the enough. wall yeller. Right. Yeah, so the wall yeller yelled uh, Cody <laughs> and Nicole are playing everyone. Um, I made a point of saying that this has nothing to do with Danny being targeted, obviously. <laughs> Danny's name isn't even involved. However, yesterday morning, we have discovered that Ian has taken this information in and is using it to uh, to fuel his game in a different direction. Um, and I have to imagine that part of the reason why they're shutting the backyard down is because Ian won't shut up about the wall yeller, despite <laughs> how many times they keep telling him to shut up about the wall yeller. Yes. So, um, so, uh, so Ian heard... Nicole and, and Cody are playing everyone, and now he's on this theory that Cody and Nicole are the core, that it's just Cody and Nicole and everyone else is just some version of side alliance. And the energy is good. The the uh, the intention is good here, right? With uh, like, it's better, I think. Well, maybe, but it's it, most of the time it's going to be better that he's aware uh, of the fact that he's you know on the outs and that he needs to do something because he does need to do something. Um, but uh, but he's he's kind of aiming it in the wrong direction because he's so convinced that Nicole is so pivotal in this spot. And uh, he was talking to Kaser just before this roundtable started, and Kaser was like, that's not really Nicole's game, though. She likes to just like like weasel her way in with people lie low for a little while and then uh and then make like a weaselly move uh an opportunistic move uh in the second half of the game that's that's nicole's style which is exactly what she's doing it's um, a good read. and uh, but 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 uh ian is convinced that she is the power broker with cody and that they are orchestrating everything which is it's not that's not what it is it's Cody and Enzo. The, that's the true power pair. And Enzo has been doing a great job because they feel like Enzo is one of the outer rings. And yeah, that they he's think he's been... like one step, ab one step above David. In exactly. Terms of, uh, Literally. Like, uh, it's in terms of being in the Onion Alliance. You know, he's like, uh, you know, like five rings removed from actual power when in fact he's actually part of the power. And yeah. I think that he just, he just appears to be non-threatening and, and that we can talk about that later but obviously His personality like, yeah exactly he's just too much fun yeah. oh it's goofy enzo like whatever you know like that's yeah that's like, how whatever. i would yeah feel. exactly yeah yeah yeah, he likes to they, repeat they, what people say to him, like the last word yes, of it. Like, uh, yes. mm -hmm. I've been yeah. I've been watching Enzo so much this week. I'm like fully up on all of his tells. Um, and yes. I just find it so <laughs> funny when somebody comes up to him and he has no idea what they're talking about. And he's just like, yeah, exactly. Yo. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and, and it's like, I know he has no idea what they're saying. No but freaking <laughs> clue. Yeah. yeah, it's just literally word salad. Like when yeah. you hear a politician on the air and you know that they're just spouting you know what like it's it, it literally makes no sense what he's saying to them but like but in the moment though as a house guest you feel like he hears you you feel like that yeah. and you also feel like he's not sneaky like that's one of the last things anyone would accuse enzo of is being sneaky in the mm -hmm. house and yet he literally is one of the sneakiest people there you it's can't out sneak so the meow things. meow yo this is exactly. all stars that's it they, a lot of these house guests, they did not watch Big Brother 12. They really didn't. They, I, I don't think they realized how Enzo played. They might like, oh, yeah, he started some alliance, had these guys, whatever. They didn't understand how hard he played that season and who he lied to and who he made, like, the bad guys in that season. Ian understands it a little bit. He was talking about uh, 12 and how, you know, like, uh, uh, Brendan and Rachel were the big bad on that season. Then Jessica and Cody on 19 were the big bad. This year, it's uh, Janie and Casey are the big bad. So, you know, like, maybe some, of, some pieces of the puzzle are coming together. And maybe Ian has enough of the puzzle to upset the balance of the power structure in the house, but it just depends on how, like, it depends on who gets HOH. It depends on how he plays it. Like, if he tries to do, like, a Nicole, Nicole, uh, 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 what did I say? Nicole something. Uh, if he tries to do uh, any sort of nominees that, that ends up with Cody being backdoored, that would be something to behold. But I don't know that he has an accurate enough view of the house to actually upset 
the power structure in the house because the real power structure in the house, in my view, is like it's always like Enzo, Cody, Tyler. It's that, it's that like yeah. triumvirate right there. And like you, Enzo's a little bit more like with Tyler nowadays, but he could easily like switch back to Cody depending on the state of the house. And like if you don't do anything to get one of those three guys or two out of the three up on the block, I don't know that the real dynamics of the house is going to change. Yeah, how, how's this for a conspiracy theory? Uh, Matt Hoffman has been downplaying Enzo's threat level for years uh, in anticipation for Enzo to come back and rep the brigade. Um, <laughs> I like it. The yeah. long game. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, you know. I'm sure people will believe that now. Um, so, uh, yeah, so so that's what so Ian is 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 on this kick. Um, part of the problem uh, on top of having a sort of inaccurate read on where the structure lies is that he he has I don't think he's really approached this information uh, in the right way in terms of how he is choosing to dole it out. Who are we um, talking about Ian? Ian, yes. Okay, cool. That uh, Ian his only real relationship in the house is with Nicole. He hasn't really made any other connections. Um, so sort of out of the blue, he has decided to just dump some information on Kevin. Um, and he told Kevin his big theory about everything. Um, and he said, Kevin, don't tell anyone. So of course, Kevin immediately told Davon. Now, Kevin has actually kept Ian's name out of it for now, but that pissed Dave on off. Um, and they went all sorts of places with the theory. Um, he also has now told Bailey about some of it, uh, yeah. which is not great. And we'll certainly get back to Dave on at some point where she will then connect the dots that, Oh, it was Ian that told Kevin. And now they must have a connection that, uh, that they're trying to hide, which they now do. They have made an alliance called the light ring. Um, and, um, he's now also told Kaser, who is like, uh, so how does this help me stay this week? And Ian was like, oh, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> and so, Sorry, dude. <laughs> yeah. like, hope, like, Kaser, I would imagine, not the kind of guy to, to die a quiet death, um, will probably use this information. I mean, it could help him to some degree. You might as well throw something against the wall. Um, not to mention the fact that Kaser just can't keep a secret for the life of him. Um, he told Ian that Bailey and Davon are targeting Tyler and Cody, uh, which he believes is true, but is a very deadly secret for Bailey and Davon. Yes. <laughs> so uh, he's not exactly great at keeping secrets. So this... This information and Ian's sort of theories are really going to, uh, I believe, be all over the house uh, at some point or another because there's no way this is staying so, quiet. Uh, just to be clear, your argument is that Ian's theories are going to upset the current balance of the house, which currently stands at the fact that Danny is looking like she might be in trouble. And if Ian's theories continue to get out and up into the power structure of the house, like Cody ends with Tyler and Cody can convince Tyler and Enzo, hey, look, 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 I, I know you're worried about Danny, but look at this over here. Like, I told you about these outsiders. Look at what they're doing. Like, they're talking about us. They've clocked us. We have to take care of that. It's definitely a possibility, but uh, I don't know. I kind of – I. I I don't know. Like, honestly, like, this is the way I honestly feel about it. Levine, I don't know if you agree with me. Like, I, I know the wall yeller can sometimes, almost always, help the majority alliance. I know that it's not great. I know it violates whatever integrity of the game there is. I know all that. But this season has been such a freaking bore that, honestly, even though we were currently getting, like, shit pie, I'd rather have, like, shit pie with, like, a little bit of frosting on top. Because, like, at least yeah. this made me feel a little bit better, Darren. I was <laughs> frustrated. Like, Melissa, I was frustrated, and I really, really, really wanted something to happen. And when the wall yeller happened, and then you hear Ian talking about this, even though he doesn't have all the pieces right, it's like, yeah. you know what? At least he's at least he's not content. He's not the Ian we saw like you know in the morning when he mm -hmm. was like fine being like ninth and eighth. All of a sudden Ian's like I don't want to be ninth and eighth. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be led to the slaughter. I want to do something about it. I'm like what the hell happened to this guy? And uh, obviously it's the wall yeller. So I I'm kind of of two minds about it. Sorry for being fancy fancy. <laughs> I mean I, I mean go ahead. The, I was just gonna say the thing with the wall yeller is that even though you know because here's my thing the way that i thought of the wall yeller was okay someone yells we've this isn't the first time we've ever heard of a wall yeller um 
but it doesn't mean that anyone's going to take that information and do anything with it. They could think that, you know, oh, that this person's like trying to screw with us or they, you know, Googled like random, it's, it's not even a fan. It's like random, like Googled random house guests. And there's like, putting random names together you know they could just overthink this to hell because they have time to you know what i mean so even though ian is taking this information and spreading whatever he is even though it might not be all perfect um it's still something exciting and it's still giving us something because when ian was spreading that was going around last night and saying that stuff i was more glued to the feeds and i was more glued to the updates otherwise case right? going home cool going to bed at 10 p.m I Bye mean, I, I, I would argue that the more exciting thing that happened this week is the thing we haven't touched on yet, which is everything regarding Cody and Tyler and Danny. Um, oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because this Ian stuff is just spinning wheels. It's ne it's not going to go anywhere. It's it's like, you know, quick it's fire. Not gonna go to, it's not going to go anywhere unless, like, Ian directly wins HOH. Then right, I do feel right. like he would do something about it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, like, I, look, for me, uh it's it's uh I, like i i have to be consistent like uh if if something impacts the game in a way that i like um i then don't have a right to complain if it impacts the game in a way that i don't like and if a wall yeller ruined the game of somebody i really liked like caser or whoever um and like totally destroyed a season I would have no ground to stand on to say, that's not fair. How dare you do that? Because when we say that we are fine with a wall yeller interrupting the game, we're saying that we are perfectly willing to give our consent to any crazy individual that has the opportunity to buy a loudspeaker um, <laughs> and yell into the backyard. Uh, and I feel like that's not a good message to send. As we yeah. can see, because literally a couple of days later, somebody else has gone to try and do the same thing, and now they don't have a backyard. My thing is, though, is that I think that this is happening in particular with this season, because this could happen any season. Let's be honest with ourselves. The wall is there. It's readily available. We're outside. Anyone has access on Amazon to a, like a bullhorn, whatever it is. Um, and I just think that it's happening this season out because people are bored. Like people feel the way that me and Brent are, are feeling right now. And I, I, it's not more so like, oh, my favorite's getting targeted. Or like, even if this happened to Kaser, I feel like it wouldn't, I, I, I just feel like it's not going to happen anyways. Like I, just you because- think, You think people wouldn't ruin the games of a fan favorite? People have tried before. I guess, but I just feel like the reason it's happening is because Kaser literally has no power right now. And but I don't think that, somebody who won't, wouldn't have power, they would do it. You know what I mean? To that person who has power. Because I, I, I feel like we're not necessarily defending it. It's just that it's not in a way that's harming the game in like, I, I understand it's the integrity, but it's not harming the, like the excitingness of it. You get what I mean? I mean, I, I would argue that if this uh, new Ian development while it may have given us a couple of like fun Ian conversations, if it ends up shutting down the Danny target next week and reinforcing the power structure, then it could have ultimately like locked us into an entire season's worth of this. Consequences. Where yes. where okay. otherwise things were about to be shaken up. That's fair. I like uh, Lavina, are you with me on this? Uh, we like the wall yeller for now. If things go to shit, we disavow the wall yeller. Like, yep. <laughs> like that's we're hypocrites. It's fine. Saying. It's fine. Like <laughs> um, we just want exciting, exciting stuff, y'all. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I like I I hear that I do. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, but like like I said, for me, it's just that uh, gotta be like, consistent. Yeah, I get it. Totally. Um, and also, like the how here's the thing: the house guests know that the game has been boring. Like it's not like they don't know that the game has been boring. They understand that this is. This is kind of a boring season. I thought this was supposed to be all stars, and I'm like, well, it is. You're just all not playing hard. And and I think yeah. another big part of it too, though, is that uh, like we as people on a podcast and we collectively as the community online have a lot of power when it comes to whether or not people feel justified in wall yelling. And when you encourage wall yelling that you like, you are also encouraging wall yelling that you will not like. Um, and I think that's a very, you're playing with fire. I really think it's, I really think you're playing with I fire. I have two words to say to that. Unlimited power!
I'm sorry if that's like that. If I people, can't help it, Tara. I'm if sorry. people feel inclined to buy something off of Amazon, buy like a speaker set because of Brent and I, record it because I want to see it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't do that. I'm kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't listen to Lavina. No, we're, 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 we're just like, we're, 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 we're laughing at what happens. We're not yeah. condoning it. We're no, not no, no, saying no. anything about it. We're just like, look, it happened. We have, we, we, we have a reaction to it. That's where I'm at right now. That's it. We're just yeah. fans. Yeah. Um, well, I can tell you, uh, we might as well talk about it now. Uh, I did put on the survey, what is your stance on wall yellers? Uh, I was very curious to know because there's very, you know, there's it's it's very heated debate online. Yes. Um, and uh, our audience, at least with over 2000 votes, uh, very lopsided vote here. Very anti wall yeller. Oh, um, boy. Yes. yes. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Close to 90 uh, percent anti wall yellers versus pro wall yellers. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe pro wall yellers are tend to be very yelly and vocal about their opinions. Um, but most yeah. people are very against the wall yelling, apparently. Now, can I ask a question? So can you actually read the question that you asked? Because so much of that, like when you take a poll, it's so much about like the question. What yes. did you say? The question is, what is your stance on wall yellers? Are you a pro wall yeller or anti wall yeller? Okay. Mm, All right. That's okay. a fair question. That's okay. fair. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised it's 90-10. I thought it'd be more like 70-30. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Where are you people? You you guys are such liars. You say that you're on Twitter. <laughs> you're on Twitter saying, "Oh, that was amazing. That was so great. We never had a. We had that was the best night of feeds ever. Thank exactly. you, Molly. You were amazing. And then like, where are you in Terrence poll? You're not. You're nowhere to be found. <laughs> there it is. All right. Um, so let's talk about the Danny stuff because this is the real sort of meat of the gameplay of what's happening here. Um, that uh, basically. For the last few weeks, um, Tyler has not been enjoying uh, Danny. Um, that uh, he is uh, he is not not very fond of her and the in the game that she has been playing. Um, and he has been planting seeds, uh, and she has been kind of screwing herself up here and there, um, like this whole rogue vote thing and all of that. Um, and uh, he has decided uh, that he wants Danny gone, and he recognizes his own position in the power structure of Cody's power structure as not a winning one. He said that to the to the feeds after David screwed up, which is part of this. It's this is a long story. Let me try and tell this story very quickly. Um, Tyler is in this power structure with Cody, but he knows he's not in the in the driver's seat. Uh, that Cody is in the driver's seat because he has Danny and Nicole and Enzo all loyal to him. Tyler recognizes this. He wants to pull in Bay and Day so that uh, so that he has more power. And in order to do that, uh, he needed to take out Danny instead of allowing them to take out Davon, which is what they wanted. So Tyler had to flip the, uh, flip people against Danny. So over the last couple of weeks, he has been working on doing that. Uh, in the middle of trying to do that, shortly before he was going to approach Day and Bay about making a move on Danny. David decided to out uh, Davon, uh, out to Davon that Tyler and Cody had told him that there was a vote flip happening and that uh, that she was part of it, which she was, but it was it was a mess. And uh, David got into trouble. Tyler had to do a lot of damage control with Davon and make it seem like David is is lying about this or exaggerating about this. And so Tyler had to put that plan on the back burner for a little while because he couldn't trust Davon with it. Um, you know, fa flash forward to a week later, um, Cody still has his guard down with Danny. He's still talking about how she's not trustworthy. Tyler takes advantage of that opportunity. He ends up finally flipping Enzo against Danny. Enzo now wants to go after Danny. Then the night of the wall yeller, when the feeds were down, Tyler had a conversation with uh, Bailey where he opened up to her about some things. Nicole and Danny had slipped at some point and said and uh, show um, shown Tyler that Nicole was aware of the slick six uh, and he didn't know that. And so uh, he was able to uh, get them on board as well. And they were already on board, but uh, but he manages to sort of solidify that. So they all get up together with Enzo and they're all now anti Danny Danny is has got to go and Cody now is looking at it like whoa hold on this is not where I wanted this to go I wanted you to not trust Danny I did not want you to target Danny um, and he's recognizing that he is being usurped in the power structure by Tyler but 
there's nothing he can do about it. So that is the current sort of power struggle going on on the feeds right now. And Cody has been struggling. He has not been able to sleep this week, uh, the last few days. Um, and he is clearly agitated in, in a lot of his conversations. He, he sees what is happening, but he is powerless to stop it at the moment, Lavina. Yeah, um, and I feel like we're going to be seeing a lot of this in the next few weeks is just going to be kind of like a Tyler versus Cody situation going on. And I'm super excited for it, that being said. Um, and I feel like the thing with Tyler is that he manages to squeeze himself into, into situations just off of being like charming and like being so social that I feel like he Cody has nothing on Tyler in that in that regard obviously so I, we're going to be seeing a lot of you know heated discussions between the two and it's probably going to be passive aggressive but hey yeah I don't know that Cody has ever come up against a player like Tyler before who yeah. is actually better than him he is better in the charm department he's better with empathizing with people and people gravitate to Tyler as much as they gravitate to Cody honestly what happened with Cody and Danny insofar as like losing control of the plot so quickly before he realized what was happening reminded me of about two weeks ago when I was dealing at the casino and this guy bought in for $500 right he wanted black chips which are $100 chips so I gave it to him called it out just like I always do he put all five black chips up there bet five hundred dollars on a blackjack hand i called it out black action fine my floor walks away for 10 minutes comes back 10 minutes later after dealing with some other bullshit that was happening this guy's up over ten thousand dollars and he's like when did that happen i'm like i called it out it's happening like i said black action you knew that he was betting big and he's like why I, this is like 10 he's up ten thousand i'm like yes he's up ten thousand so like honestly it reminded me of cody because he like knew that there were things happening against Danny, but like he took his eye off the ball just a little bit. And then once he looked back, it was so far gone. He couldn't really do anything about it. And he's tried, he tried mm -hmm. to change the plot. He's attempted to introduce new elements, new things that maybe T Tyler or Enzo weren't previously aware of in order to change the current plot as it stands that Danny is the bad guy, the big bad that we have to get out, but he has not been successful. And Tyler has done a really excellent job of making sure of just like doing good, solid, boring work <laughs> where you plant seeds and let them grow and just come by every five days, sprinkle a little water on them, walk away, come back, which other people in the house, Danny, are not capable of doing and are not as good a player as Tyler. Uh, I knew Tyler was a good player on season 20, his original season, but the work that he's done over the past week really impresses me to the point where I'm like, he's just clearly the best player in the house. I don't know if he'll win the game, but he, he, he's just, he's really, really good. Yeah. And I think that's what Danny wants to do. She wants, like we talked about this um, multiple times. We said that she wants to, you know, plant the seed and, you know, whatever, but it, it doesn't come off that way at all. It comes off as, you know, like her jumping into the soil and like what, throwing dirt around, whatever. But Tyler is just so effortless to the point where it's like, and I know Brent, you said it's boring, but I just, I feel like watching Tyler is like, watch, I don't know, it's, it's just, I, I find like an that artist so or a, like a composer. Like, is that, do you, do you feel that way? At a all? gardener like, perhaps? Yeah, I could gardener. never say these things. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Well, like, I mean, like I no, do, I'm I do. I'm saying I, that if I said them, you said them I you'd be, be like roasted. the fanboy yeah. that's blowing Tyler. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So like, no, the, we'll the people, fan, yeah, the people online, uh, I will, I will say that some of the people online in the chat are saying like, Oh, that Tyler's bored that that's why he's taking, trying to get rid of Danny here. But I honestly don't see it that way. I don't think that he's bored. I mean, he, maybe he happens to be bored while this is happening, but it's he's not acting against Danny because he's bored. He happens to be bored while at the same time trying to displace Danny from the power structure in the house so that it weakens Cody's side, brings Enzo back to his side, and exactly. Tyler is now in control of the game, whereas Cody is not. And unfortunately, Cody doesn't have the tools currently right now to do anything about it. Now, if this Ian stuff gets out, if Kevin blows it up, if Dave blows it up, maybe that will change. But as things stand right now, Tyler, I think, has control of the game. And on top of it all, 
Tyler has now fully misted Danny uh, to the point oh, where yeah. she is defending Tyler, um, <laughs> thinking that he is so like loyal and for the cause. <laughs> so she is like, and and Cody is like, uh, so Cody, Cody's one of Cody's concerns is that uh, Dan, Day and Bay know that Cody knows about the Danny plan, and if they know, then Danny might find out. So he's trying to put in work, in my opinion, to Danny to be like, hey. I don't know what's happening. I'm kind of worried. Uh, have you seen Day and Bay? Have you seen Tyler? Um, and she's like, yeah, Day and Bay, they suck. But Tyler's cool, totally cool. He's like, are you sure? Because I'm a little bit worried. She's like, no, believe me, I squashed it. We had a conversation. It was such a good conversation. Like, we are good. Uh, and he's like, oh, fine. And he's going to Enzo and he's like, man, it's kind of annoying that Tyler said that we knew to Day and Bay, right? And Enzo's just like, Sure, yo, but Danny's got to go. That's it, though. That's it. Um, and he's just getting stonewalled left and right. He really is. Like, Lavina, I know you just saw this conversation. It, it took place like two hours ago with Tyler, or sorry, with Tyler, with, with, with Cody and Danny, where, like, I tweeted that Cody was basically, like, trying to put, like, the blinkers on for Danny. Like, honey, there's danger ahead. Don't you see that there's danger over here with Tyler? It's coming. You need to be aware of it. Like, he talked about the, the fact that Tyler uh, feels like he's on the outs, that Tyler has a big ego. But at every freaking turn, Danny was team Tyler. Every yeah. To every uh, thing that, that Cody brought up, Danny had a witty retort. Like, well, what else is he supposed to do? Of course he's going to do that. Like, mm -hmm. she is so snowed by Tyler right now. Now I am, I, I, I just, I, I don't know how she's playing this bad. Yeah. And he's got Enzo. He's got, he had Cody, but until Cody's realizing it's too late now at this point, it's just, it's like talking to walls. There's nothing he can do about it at this point. So I do think you're right about to. the the Cody thing, though. I think he's trying to insulate himself from Danny when the wrecking ball comes for her and he doesn't want to be uh, caught in the shrapnel of her wreckage. Yeah, um, because because again, like Cody was like Cody was like, hey, I would prefer Day goes first than Danny. But even then, he was like he was on board with taking Danny out because he doesn't trust her. It wasn't until he was implicated in the in the in the in the targeting that yeah. he started to freak out. Panic. Um, yes, yeah. because he knows that like I think he's less concerned about being, uh, you know, unseated in the power structure and more concerned about his entire game blowing up if Danny thinks that she betrayed him or that he betrayed her um, and then blows up his whole game. Um, yeah. And so that's what I think he's really worried about. I concur with that as well. Yeah, I don't think that he's not, I don't think that Cody I, I think in, in Cody's delusional mind, I don't think he realizes that he's losing control of the game he might he may not even realize that he had control of it to begin with like he he may not realize that as the house currently stood like last week it was cody one you know and tyler like two or three as it stands right now it's tyler one cody two or three so i don't but i don't know that in his narcissistic brain he realizes that he's been displaced i think he doesn't even really acknowledge that it's more about the fact that like it's it's not about being one or two. It's about being one or done in that in terms of my whole game going up in smoke. And because Danny might feel like I betrayed her when in actuality, I, this is not coming for me, but now Bay and day know about it. Enzo knows about it. Tyler knows about it. Who else knows about it? Cause if Bay and day know about it, other people may know about it. And I don't want to be implicated in that. Yeah, I, I do think he is concerned about Enzo slipping to Tyler, um, and that that would definitely lose him some power. Um, I want to see diary rooms on that. I, I don't know if we'll get any. I hope we do. Or maybe yeah. like a, a, a camera talk or something. Like, I would love to hear, because neither one of them are good at that. Um, yeah. But I would love to hear what they're really thinking. Like, is he actually concerned? Like, because, you know, look, look, here's the thing like, that we've talked about this before, like on Survivor, you're always the hero of the of your own narrative. Like, I think Cody thinks like he's the good guy. So obviously Enzo would work with me. So like eventually, like Enzo will come back to me. Like, is he actually concerned that Enzo is going away or is he like? I mean, so that's no. what I was saying was I think he's concerned about it, but I think that it's it's like it's a minor concern. It's like and no uh, one's ever done that to Cody before. No one's ever like gone away from yeah. Cody. Everyone's always wanted to come to Cody in BB 16. So he's never had to deal with that before. I don't think he can recognize it, even if it was right in front of him. Yeah, yeah. he's met his match in Tyler. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's quickly talk about the state of the house. It's mostly the same um, beyond these shifts of in power structure. Um, there are some new developments. The Slick Six is basically done at this point. Um, Enzo. Enzo, Bay, Day, and Tyler are all champing at the bit to uh, to take a shot at Danny. Danny 
and Cody are really wanting to take that shot at Davon or uh, sorry at Bailey. Uh, Cody would prefer Davon. Um, yeah. And uh, and Cody even said today. I'm done with the slick six. Uh, I'm done with it. Now they're still going to have some meetings. Um, they're, they're planning some meetings, but some, some uh, old business meeting. We needed. We had old business on the agenda today. Yes, um, but uh, but it's basically done. Ian is also bailing on four prime. Um, he's he's done with that. Uh, he now has an alliance with Kevin called the Light Ring um, that he made. It's so Lord of the like Rings. An hour like, ago. What is that? Well, yeah. basically they were in the photo room, and Ian was like, "What do we call it?" Uh, light ring uh, light because ring. it was right there's a light ring right there uh coke can <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. um enzo christmas and kevin made a new loose alliance um they haven't really been talking uh that much and it really would benefit them if they started talking because they've all they all have a lot of important information that they could share um and the core four is also basically done at this point uh enzo is done with the core four because he's not into danny at all um so the core four is also disintegrating in front of our eyes so the real power structure here it's barely any of these alliances anyway it, really what it is it used to be cody and enzo at the top Followed by Danny and Nicole, followed by Tyler, followed by Bay and Day. Um, and then you had like uh, Memphis and Christmas and, uh, you know, a couple others sprinkled in here and there. Um, now it's more like Tyler at the top with his sort of like secret weapon Christmas. And he's got his like, uh, you know, um, I don't know, what would you call David? Like uh, very unreliable uh <laughs> Cannon. Un unwitting stooge. Um, <laughs> Sorry, is that too mean? Uh, it's that was just, nicer than just, I thought. He's just like a wildfire. Like, uh, he could be useful, but you don't have a lot of control over him. Um, mm -hmm. Then you ha he's got Enzo on board with him. But more importantly, he's got Bay and Day uh, with him tight. Um, and then Cody is now a little bit below them uh, uh, behind Enzo. And then uh, Nicole is now behind Cody. And uh, and now Danny is like almost completely on the outs. Um, but this could still change depending on the HOH next week. Uh, because uh, if somebody like Danny wins or somebody that they, that they can convince to go after Day and Bay, wins then uh then they can they can they might be able to win their spot back and also we cannot forget the ian of it all um because uh if if ian's theories come out and i do think that they will who knows what kind of impact that will have uh, on on what's going on because i don't think that day and bay will mind all that much but they need support from enzo and tyler and if enzo and tyler feel like ian is on to the group uh and might be targeting either one of them then it's no longer in their best interest to take this shot at danny who is not taking a shot at them yet she's taking a shot at day and bay and it kind of incentivizes them to close ranks and cody will definitely encourage it so we'll see um they have exposed a lot of information so they're, they're, it's going to be harder for them to close ranks without getting exposed but uh you know again we'll, we'll see where this goes but the state of the house is very fluid right now mm -hmm. Yeah, very yeah. fluid right now. Uh, sorry, Lubina, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, yeah, for sure. And it's crazy because, you know, um, there's they were there were all these power structures and structures, and we were thinking, these aren't going to budge. It, they're just going to keep winning out HOH. You know, Enzo, Tyler, and Cody are just going to exchange HOHs and possibly vetoes. Um, and it's crazy how, granted, it's not just from the wall yeller, obviously, but so many things can happen in the house, and it can just turn in to complete fluidity and we don't know what's going to happen next. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, to, to be clear, the one thing that could happen from the wall yeller is that things solidify back up. Yeah, exactly. I was right. gonna say that. Yeah, like there there is a like dark timeline here where like the wall yeller causes everything to shut down as it's getting exciting. And then like the outsiders just continue to get targeted. You know, Day and Bay end up on the block. And Bay I haven't even the mentioned block. the worst case scenario, I think, in terms of house stability, which is that uh, Ian is talking about making sure he targets people in the core he wants to go after cody um the suggestion is put up danny next to cody which would be the perfect thing for everyone in the power structure because now 
Oh no, sorry Danny, we had to do this, but we'll convince you that we're taking out Cody first, but then we'll blindside you, and then, oh, Cody has no blood on his hands, and everyone gets to, you know, happily skip along, because everything right. worked out perfectly, and nobody had to betray anybody. Yeah, yeah that, that that is something that I thought about, and honestly, I didn't even want to deal with that, because in your head, it's like, oh, it's so good, like Ian putting Cody and Danny up on the block, like how much better can it get? They have to sit on the block and look at each other. But then it's like, yeah, but the ramifications of that are really profound because if that happens, then somebody like Tyler, like he never has to make his big move. He never has to show his cards. Like everything that, that, that was getting exciting about what Tyler was doing is the fact that he's not afraid to show his cards. Like he, he's totally fine saying, look, I'll take the shot at Danny. I really don't care. Like I, I want HOH. Give me, give me Danny. That's like basically Tyler. But if Ian does it for him, he's not going to then out himself and say, oh yeah, I wanted this to happen. He's going to be like, ah, oh, sorry, Danny, girl, bye. And no, the only like, thing we, we don't want that. And the only thing that's going to happen, so if that were to happen, Ian cannot compete for HOH next week. Someone wins, maybe from that side. They put Ian up. He's already targeted to He's begin the new with. Big as bad. We, yeah. Exactly. As we speak, it's, I mean, Kaser's going to leave and it's already happening. So if that were to happen, it's just going to. It would literally be happen. two more weeks of this kind of like, we know what's going to happen. The exactly. stability of the house is, is solid and, and we're not going to like the way things go. So I'm actually not rooting for an E and HOH. I mm -hmm. really, I'd love to see Tyler and I can't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> Tyler yeah. would be the most exciting because I do think he's willing to just stab her right in the front. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So let's talk stock watch. Yes, you guys, let's do you it. guys ready to talk stock watch? Yes. Um, let's uh, let's. By the way, uh, just FYI, I saw the people in chat. Uh, like Lavina is here because Melissa is away. Obviously, like yes. I know, like she 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 announced last week that she would not be here, and so uh, it's like we we uh, asked Lavina to sub in and uh, be a part of the show tonight, and she is an absolute star. So uh, <laughs> she, Melissa has given Lavina her ratings. Uh, so Lavina will announce those and then Lavina will give her own thoughts and her own personal ratings if she wants to. And mm -hmm. uh, then uh, we're going to see what happens. I am not like, I'll just tell y'all, I know who I bought last week in the stock watch and I know what ratings I'm handing out. Uh, I'll be lucky if I can stay in the 2000s. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to the stock watch. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> This is what we've got going for us. Um, all right, uh, are we going in reverse alphabetical again? I was gonna, I was gonna ask to change that. Um, let's, uh, let's. Uh, do you want to start from the right? I like starting. I like starting or alphabetically. I feel like it's a good order. Um, okay. So uh, let's start with Bailey. Let's start with Bailey. Um, uh, no, no uh, Alexander does a great job. I I forgot to uh, to tell her I wanted to do it. In the yeah, no big deal. No big deal. We can we can work with this. Uh, this is uh, she does she does wonderful things. I believe Christina is actually filling in for Alexander tonight. Um, Excellent. So uh, thank you to to both of them for for the great work. Um, but let's start with Bailey. Um, I'll I'll start here with Bailey. Go ahead. All right. Last week I gave Bailey a five, um, and that's because I was concerned for her safety in the coming week, uh, and I wasn't loving what she was doing. I feel in a very similar spot with Bailey this week. I feel like her position has improved because Tyler has managed to flip Enzo. She's on board, Day's on board. Uh, like a lot of things are going right here, but people like Danny uh, and, and Nicole are still very dead set on taking Bay out. Cody, I think if he won, w might go ahead and just put Bay and Day up on the block because uh, he feels like he, he wants to, to squash this whole thing. Um, that's a little concerning. And then the concerning thing as well is that even if the Danny thing happens, um, Enzo still wants Davon gone. He would he does want to keep Bailey around, as does Tyler, but Cody does not want to keep uh, or Cody does want to keep Bailey around as well. But Cody might change his mind on that if uh, if he's like, hold now they're keeping Bailey and they're close to Bailey. Um, so I I feel like. Bailey has a deep run in her. I really do. Um, but for as long as she is so attached to Devon, I just don't feel comfortable with her game because in a lot of ways, the things that Devon 
does in the house to fact check um, fairly or unfairly yes yes uh it really it really puts bailey in a spot where she is going to be put on the block uh next to davon could go home if what if what if davon wins a veto what if you know anything can happen at that point um and it's it's just not a very good position to be in so i'm still at a five for bailey i i really feel like as soon as davon leaves um i feel like bailey is going to be in a great spot um if davon stays i think she can slowly work her way up to a good spot but it's going to be there's still a long way to go for for them to get there yeah for sure um and then so i think what i'm going to do is i'm just going to read there's a couple of uh, small notes that melissa left me for each score so i'm just going to read those off she actually has a big one for ba for bailey so um can i just give my score right right yeah, of course yeah of course yeah, yeah. okay Awesome. So Melissa's going with a six um, for Bailey this week. And she, for the note, she wrote, I think she's been placed in a bad spot this week. She should be fighting to keep Kaser around, but she can't fight too hard or else she'll lose her spot or her own place in the game. I was really upset with her at the beginning of the week, but I'm really starting to see the tightrope she needs to walk here. She made a valiant effort last night and it almost worked, but she knew when to step back and let the chips fall where they may. I think she's in a good position moving forward. No one seems to want to target her right away. I'm impressed, I'm impressed with Bay. The reason why she's not higher for me in her ranking is that she's still losing allies left and right and ultimately may not have people standing with her when she needs it. And um, I think after I give Melissa's, I'll give my own like hypothetical one. Sure. Um, and I think that I would go down to a five for Melissa's score for, for mine personally, so I'm sticking with Taryn. Um, because I think that she... I mean, Melissa said that she's um, not being targeted right away. I feel like she is being targeted right away. Just few because, people, definitely, yeah. Yeah, because I feel as though, you know, obviously Dan like Danny, and then if she were to, same thing as T Taryn was saying, was that if Javon were to go up, obviously Bailey is going to go up next to her. And if vetoes are used, then there's a great chance that Bailey could go home. I want to rank her higher because I do agree. I do feel like her positioning is better. And I've said this time and time again, every week, her social game this year, like her game this year, so much better. So I really enjoy watching Bailey. I want to give her a six, but like positioning wise, and people are kind of actively targeting her right now. I'm going to stick with the five. Yeah, I agree with Taryn. Uh, I, I think that, that Bailey has all the tools needed to make a deep run at Big Brother. Um, but as things currently stand, things are really unsettled for her. And I do think that Devon, as much as I love her, is a detriment to Bailey. I think that Bailey is far more talented at Big Brother than Devon is. And overall, I don't think that you can, like, I, I just don't think you can feasibly go above a five here because she's playing an average game at this point. Like, socially, she's fantastic. But position wise, it's really dicey. It really mm -hmm. is. Like she's one of three people that I feel like could go home next week if like like ninety five percent of the house gets HOH. Uh, like there's definitely a way. Like Danny would obviously target Bailey. I don't know if she could get the votes against Davon because the boys obviously would want to keep Bailey. But uh, if Nicole targeted, uh, if, if Nicole won HOH, I think that I know that she's kind of come off the Bailey train a little bit, but I do think Danny could get her back onto the Bailey train a little bit. And what else is she going to do? Like put up Kevin and David? I don't know. Like, uh, I, 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 I think there are danger points for Bailey. And if she can get past this week or so, I do feel like there is an avenue for her to expand her run on the game. Yeah. Uh, the audience is with uh, Brent and myself here on this one. The audience gave Bailey a five out of 10. Uh, down from their six last week. Um, not not happy with Bailey. Um, let's just bounce around. How about that? Okay. How about Sounds we bounce good. around? What if we go back and forth? Let's go to Tyler next. Let's have some fun. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, Taryn wants to have fun. Oh my gosh. It's like the <laughs> robot wants to have fun. I've never seen this. <laughs> <laughs> this is my idea of fun. I know, we just, right? Uh, this is the really guy who messing this with is the, the order guy, here. This is the guy, y'all, who will not like. I said, oh, like he's like, I, I eat plain yogurt. I said, oh, I love vanilla yogurt. <laughs> like it's really cool. He's like, no, 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 not vanilla yogurt, plain yogurt. It's healthy. I'm like, I didn't that even know that was a thing. Disgusting comment, Brent. Vanilla <laughs> is not plain. Cause I was it's like, oh, flavor. I'm exactly like, I said, oh, I'm exactly like you, Taryn. I like, I said, I, 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 I eat vanilla too. That's all I eat is vanilla. And he's like, that's the, he's like, it's not vanilla. It's plain. He was plain like, and he like was like tart. adamant about it. Plain is <laughs> like tart. 
Yeah. Not vanilla. <laughs> yeah. All right. Brent, how do you feel about Tyler? I feel great about Tyler. I really want to give him a 10 just to like blow everyone's mind. I, <laughs> I, I could not be more impressed with Tyler. Obviously you can tell what I'm going to give him. If I was almost going to give him a 10, uh, I I'm going to give him a nine. I, 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 I feel like he is just like, talk about being an excellent player able to juggle so many balls in the air. Like I'm really bummed that he dislikes me so much because like, I really am such a big fan of him right now. Like he's such a cool player and like, it's fun when he's on your side of the house. Like when he's a player for your side of the house, it's really fun to watch. Uh, so uh, like, I just don't think you, it can be, I don't think it, it can be overstated how hard he has worked over mm -hmm. the last few weeks to put work in subtle, boring work in on Danny and how he has shaped the narrative to come to be what it is right now, which is that Danny has got to go. That didn't happen overnight. That didn't happen by planting a seed and dumping a bunch of water on it. It happened over a couple weeks. And by the time it got to the point where he was going to target Danny, it seemed like an obvious thing. Like even Cody, who doesn't want Danny to go, it's like he has no way to fight against it because of all the work, the previous work that Tyler has put into it. I really, really am psyched at what Tyler is doing um it, it's it's just really spot on awesome gameplay to watch and i really hope that he has a chance to implement it uh, but the way our luck has been going we'll probably get like a david hoh or something oh so you know <laughs> don't put that in don't put that Although, like there. to be fair to be fair i think if david gets hoh tyler might be able to control that one so uh, that's right yeah that might even be better for tyler and then but that but also i feel like kind of keep keep intact the power structure of the game because then Tyler would be like, Oh, look, I had nothing to do with it. But then like he, uh, he'd be able to have David do his dirty work for him. So it's a nine and he was really close to getting a 10 for me. Yeah. You know, I, it's been such a tricky week for me to rate Tyler because I was considering a 10 as, as like, uh, early goes, like last night I was like, can I, could I give Tyler a 10? Like in, in terms of this week, because we, we go back to yeah. since the last round table, he put out the David fire. That was part of this week. That was incredible. He also flipped everyone on Danny. He uh, pulled Enzo to his side. He took over the power structure. Like in terms of his actions this week, it's like it's hard to ask for a ton more because he has really done a you lot can't. of great work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the thing, the only thing that that prevents me from going there is uh, is his positioning is still not perfect, and that's not a, that's not a, an indictment on his actions because I think his actions were great. Um, but uh, I do feel like he still has some obstacles to overcome. One is that there is an upset Cody um, who currently is getting stonewalled with his Tyler stuff, but uh, don't. Turn your back on Cody. Um, Cody could do a lot of damage to Tyler if he leaves him un unattended, uh, and 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 I don't think that Cody uh, that Tyler will leave him unattended, but it's still a danger. Um, he's not like if Cody, because here's the thing, that's the reason I was considering a ten last night is that Cody hadn't been upset yet. Um, Cody was like uh, he was like he was taking it. He was clearly mm -hmm. like trying to win Enzo back, but he wasn't mad at Tyler about it. Um, and it was like, holy crap, Tyler managed to pull this off and didn't even uh, like trip any alarms with Cody. But he has tripped an alarm with Cody now. Cody being aware of Tyler is dangerous. Um, on top of that, uh, if, if Tyler is the one to take the shot at Danny next week, I do think that's... A little bit of a dangerous place to be for Tyler. Um, a lot of things could blow up. A lot of people could look at him like, whoa, like he just made a big move. Uh, that worries me a little bit. Um, then the wall yeller stuff, the Ian stuff, uh, I think could really put uh, a lid on a lot of this stuff and uh, and end up per, uh, like reversing a lot of Tyler's work. So like with all of that in mind it's like oh man i'm i'm torn i'm going back and forth i don't know where to go from a 10 to an 8 i'm not sure um and so uh ultimately i feel like based on the work he put in uh i'm and and, and like the speculation that he might be in a bad spot is not enough for me to go quite down to an 8 i have a feeling that if i do this tomorrow or if I did it uh, on Thursday, um, that I might have gone down to an eight if I saw more of what might happen. Um, or if he fixes it and it's all great, then I might have gone up to a 10. So I feel like nine is the middle ground for me. And that's where I'm going to be. Lavina, 
What does Melissa have? What do you have? All right. So Melissa said, I think he's putting in, putting himself in a good position and is seemingly winning the war against Danny. I'm consistently impressed. So Melissa went with an eight. Um, I'm, I think that that's a little bit low. Um, you know, just kind of like what Taryn said. Read her, read her for Phil. (laughs) <laughs> no, I love Melissa. Stop that. Don't, don't do that. Um, no, but I think I would give, um, myself give Tyler a nine just because I, I didn't really consider a 10 at all, just because for me, a 10 is like, like, Holy grail. You know what I mean? It's like perfection. And I feel like nobody is really perfect. Hannah Montana said it once. Nobody's perfect. Huh? But right. like, my thing is, is if it's all about power, like where is the power shifting? And if, you know, if Cody were to somehow land into power, we don't know what's that's to say if Tyler makes that move, that big move against Danny, who's to say, he's like, you know what? I'm going to make a big move. I'm going to get rid of Tyler. I'm seeing all of this in front of me. I'm pissed off, like whatever the case. So that's why I, I wouldn't go with a 10, but I definitely wouldn't go as low as an eight because the first thing, first off, I'm super excited right now that I'm even giving Tyler a score. Like I'm sitting here giving Tyler a score. Like that's right. crazy to me um, because the first thing that I, heard about when I heard about an all-star season I was like if they don't have Tyler Crispin for a modern all-star big brother cancel it don't do just don't even do it you know what I mean so I feel like watching him play is a joy and yeah I can't I so that's why I wouldn't go down to an eight it just seems low to me it's crazy how an eight is low for a, yeah. this, this the player. thing that you mentioned uh Taryn most that really hit me was the part about like Tyler needing to be attentive to Cody because I don't know if you guys remember from 16 but Cody can get really petulant when he feels like he's been uh, a, like a, a direct affront against him. So if he feels as though that Tyler is doing this on purpose to screw over Cody a little bit, I do think there is danger there. But it, it, that, again, that speculation hasn't happened yet. And, uh, you know, past is not always prologue. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, the audience, um, this is, this is uh, for, the, for the second one in a row, uh, Melissa, who I, I touted as the voice of the people, um, still uh, for the second week in a row now, uh, not the voice of the people, at least so far. Uh, the audience did go with a nine for Tyler this week. Good job, guys. Um, we did it. Yeah, I saw a lot of people in chat saying they give him a 10, which is good. I feel like the people in the audience, like if you want him to be at a nine, give him a ten because like it brings up the like it brings up the average song. <laughs> um, I I'm I'm pretty sure Tyler's one of the few people the audience has ever given a nine to, and now he's done it in two different seasons. Um, yep. So kudos to Tyler. Uh, awesome. Let's bounce back around to Christmas. Let's talk about Christmas, where man. Christmas was supposed to be the safe buy this week. Um, she was supposed to be. I bought Christmas last week because she was the safe buy. Um, yes. And uh, she should have been a safe buy this week. For some reason, she decided to volunteer for the block. Now. Okay. So before you proceed, can I ask you something? I don't mean to stop you, but like I got shade on this for Twitter and I said I would bring it up to you. I would take it directly to the source. So uh, Tom, I can't remember his handle on Twitter, was talking about the fact that he bought some Christmas stock and he was bitter because she's on the block and he thought there's no way that the LFC is going to go above a five because she's on the block. And then Cleo the Leo on Twitter, longtime Twitter person for Big Brother, said, what? That's bullshit. Like, uh, like just because she's on the block doesn't mean necessarily anything. So you are not like, or maybe you are, I don't know, I'll let you answer. Are, are you penalizing Christmas directly because she's been like placed herself on the block uh is it like more because it could happen again is it more like because she's really in no danger this week like if there there was ever a week to volunteer with 10 people voting to volunteer to go on the block after three women went home i feel like this was probably the week but like i just want you to address that concern from cleo that like it's not fair to penalize christmas just because she happens to be on the block in a completely safe space yeah, I mean, for me, it's the fact that she volunteered um, okay. is is going to penalize her for me. Um, I uh, Christina in the chat says that uh, the only two people to ever receive a nine from the audience are Tyler and Dane. Um, I believe oh, yeah. she was also mentioning mm-hmm. in the Discord, because we were having this conversation in the Discord the other day, that uh, Dane actually received a nine while on the block um, in Big Brother Canada 7, that was the week that he convinced uh-huh. Anthony to uh, to save him. And so we knew he was staying, and it was great gameplay, and so we gave him a 9. Um, 
So I don't think that being on the block by itself is like uh, automatic, like uh, two, three, four. Right. Um, but uh, but I do think that it's not great. There's always a chance that something could like if that wall yeller had been able to say something, who knows what could have impacted the game? Uh, who knows what kind of twists might come? Jordan thought he was safe going on the block in season three mm-hmm. of Big Brother Canada. Um so uh, being on the block in general is probably going to be like, ah. Uh, also, know. I also want to address this person. So Robert in the chat says she won't volunteer when it counts. Honey, it counts right now. What are you saying? Like the one thing that I, I thought that Christmas didn't even think of was the fact that Julie said a new room would be opening as other rooms are closed. They hadn't get, yet opened a room this week. Like we knew there was probably not going to be a room this week because they didn't announce about anything about it on the show. But these people didn't know anything about it. What if another room had opened after the veto and potentially Kaser got off the block and now she's mm-hmm. sitting there? Like anything could have happened. So that's where I'm coming from. Cleo was like, uh, like doesn't this game her some loyalty by showing that she'll take one for the team and i think that that's admirable that's that may be worth something in my ratings but on the other hand like when you know that there are twists coming down the pike and you decide to volunteer to sit up on the block for no apparent reason other than like even when enzo wasn't even looking for it she just did it like you you you, that has to be negative negatively rated i feel like well, also, there's these. I understand that a lot of these people don't really know that much about Kaser's past or like his history on the show, or that he, the fact that he was like America's favorite player, like or not America, like he was like a favorite. He was America's favorite. favorite. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, my thing is, is if you ha- if you were to know that information, why would you put yourself on the block this week? Where I like when it's you're coming off of like Janelle and now case are leaving you would think that there's a possibility that the, that the producers might want to throw in a twist here I know that like America voting yeah like maybe right. we have a vote maybe we have mm-hmm. a, a veto America's veto we could save yeah. somebody like like they, they saved uh what's his face uh Ballantine in uh in Big Brother Canada Ryan yeah. mm-hmm. uh like anything could have happened like uh, like she, she didn't know what the twist was she's gonna get away with it because there is no twist apparently this week there's no room mm-hmm. opening in the house this week but again they told them at the beginning there was i would never have volunteered for the block and it has to be taken into account just fyi my, my rating for her is a four and uh like I, I i think that's generous considering the fact that she decided to sit up there while anything could have happened to her yes she's going to get away with it but that doesn't excuse the action mm-hmm. well there you go i uh i did go down from my last week's seven but only only by one i gave her a six actually um i still feel very good about her position i think there's basically no chance she goes home um and i i do i think that her volunteering has increased the likelihood of her going up again and that's Mm -hmm. why i'm dropping her down i think her volunteering has also decreased her win equity in a jury vote um people don't like volunteers for the block it may it makes them respect you less um but i think she's still very well positioned and there's it's a long game and she can win a lot of competitions and i think she's still got a lot of potential uh moving forward so i i i dropped her down to a six and that was it lavina what do you got So um, for Melissa, she wrote that it sucks because I was actually starting to think she was playing a good game, but then she goes and volunteers to go on the block. I can't respect that. So that was her one, her note for Christmas. And she said that she gave her a four. Oh, oh, the the chat, the chat coming for me because (laughs) I gave Christmas a four. Look what Melissa did while the cat's away. Don't yeah. come for me. Don't come for me. I'm just, the, I'm just, the de- I'm delivering the message. All right. A lot of people buying Christmas stock I see in the chat. <laughs> oh boy. Well, um, well, I can say again though here that the audience is with me on this one. The audience gave Christmas a six this mm-hmm. week, um, down from their seven last week. Uh, so uh there maybe maybe i've become the voice of the people that's definitely not true though it's definitely well, not true to be fair i am inclined to agree with you i i was going to give her a five i guess i'm kind of more middle of the road um it's just i just feel like she's going to become like the block star of this season and i i never i feel like if someone's willing like kind of leaning towards becoming the block star of the season i want to go more middle of the road scores because but at the same time i don't want to give her a four because i feel like people in the house really 
like talking to Christmas. I feel like they go with her with, they go to her with a lot of information and I feel like that's beneficial. So it's just a matter of what is she going to do with that information? So I feel like but that's what she could room, do. But... Like that's, that's what she could do. Like what did she do this week? Yeah. That's what we're rating her play this week. And this is what I'm seeing. And that's why I gave her. Well, the I, rating, I, I will say, I do like that. She pulled in Kevin and she made a new alliance with Enzo. I think that was really solid play. Um, I think she could have done that without volunteering though. And so, uh, if that if she had if she just hadn't volunteered and had done that i would have easily given her a seven um if if not higher uh who knows um so there it is uh christmas gonna land at a five which man that's brutal that's brutal that's for for people that bought christmas stock um all right let's bounce back over to nicole let's talk about nicole last week she got a seven overall um Livina, let's start with you this time where are you at and where is melissa all right um so i think i might go with i think i would go with like a seven just because her positioning is still good it's just that i feel like people are matching her up with danny it's it's day one of the feats danny and nicole they were paired up they were hanging out their friends outside of the game a lot of people are aware of that and i feel like there's a possibility that there's a chance that they could go up on the block together. Again, I am talking this to death and I keep saying power, you know, it shifts, who's going to win the veto, you know, who's going to win HOH, you never know what twist could come about. Um, there's a chance that something could happen. So I'm going to go with the seven personally. Um, but what matters is what Melissa gave. And um, Melissa decided to go with an eight this week. And she said that she's still in a good place, although possibly losing her ally Danny soon. But nonetheless, people don't seem to want to target her. Even after the bullhorn, she she seemingly isn't on people's radar as she should be. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to go with a seven. I I think that her position is pretty good. Uh, The bullhorn does make me upset for her a little bit because i do think there are scenarios where she could end up on the block and a veto going the wrong way might be enough to send her home obviously if she ended up with like something like you know her and cody on the block that would be really terrible for her Mm -hmm. uh i think that overall like there aren't many people that she could sit on the block next to and go home cody happens to be one of those people though i do think that they would get rid of nicole and and keep cody but overall her her game is like it's the same rat snaky game we've always come to know and hate. Like uh, she 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 makes plays. She she's ultra paranoid. She's which makes her cognizant of her positioning in the house, which is always why it's sound. And her position is sound. There are just a few danger hurdles. But to be fair to her, those danger hurdles are things that are emanating from outside sources and nothing that she did within the game. So I I'm gonna go with the seven. Yeah, um, I can tell you that the audience did stick with their six from last week. Haters. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I will say, though, I very heavily considered a six because I gave her a seven last week, and I feel like her position has deteriorated. Um, firstly, and most importantly, she has lost the blind admiration and obedience that she had in Ian. That is no longer there. Now, the saving grace is that Ian is not going to be targeting Nicole. Uh, He does still want to keep her safe. However, he's not going to do what she says anymore, and that's going to screw her up. And that's a really bad thing to do. Uh, It's bad bad, bad thing for Nicole to have done to her. Um, And um, on top of that, she could be losing Danny as early as next week. That's also not great. However, as well, the strength of Nicole's game is that those things can happen, and she's still not in a lot of danger of going home. Uh, as Kaser said, yes. her game is to just kind of like it's be so protected. Malleable. It mm-hmm. really is. It's like liquid gold. Like it's really good, smart gameplay. Yeah, there have a few issues with it, but it's really, really hard to catch her in a spot that she would really be vulnerable in. It just like, she's, she's just like, uh, she's like, you know, syphilis. It just keeps on trucking, you know, like uh, it really is. I love how you just, that was the first thought. So, you know, what can syphilis. I say? 
Yeah. All but right. It, anyway, did you give her a score, Taryn? Or I gave her. I she barely made a seven again for me. Uh, so okay. exactly the same ratings um, from last week for every single one of us here. Um, and that's just again like uh, she's losing so much, but her, her her gameplay is still fine and her positioning is still fine because like she's not a power player. Having yep. these people was was great. But she just she just uses them as shields, um, and so they're being used right now. And I have a feeling that she'll be able to find more. To be honest, um, she's been talking to Dave on a lot. She talks to Christmas a lot. Like she'll be able to squeeze her way in somewhere else. So that's where she's at. Um, all right, let's move on. Let's bounce back around to Cody. Let's talk about Cody. Um, Brent. Yes. How do you feel about Cody? So. I gave him a six, which I believe is my lowest ever score for Cody. Uh, I gave him an eight last week. Wow. That really is a definite uh, hit for him. Um, he's just been outplayed. It's honestly the truth of the matter. But he, but on the other hand, like I was trying to be fair to him because it's not like he's been, it's not like he's playing bad. It's not like he's in a bad position in the house. He's not, but he's definitely being outplayed by somebody. And the worst part of it is, and this is really why I decided to go with the six rather than the seven is because I am still not convinced, as I uh, teased at the beginning of the show, that he recognizes it. He's such a narcissistic piece of you-know-what sometimes that I don't know that he can acknowledge that I'm being outplayed right now, that I'm like the, the ground underneath me is shifting. He may be completely oblivious to it. So until I see something in the diary room or on the cameras that lets me know that he has some self-awareness that Tyler is running circles around him right now, I think you really have to call into question his game sensibility and that combined with the fact that he's losing someone likely in Danny who at least trusts him. Even if he does not trust her, I think that overall his work for the week, he's just, he's dropped the ball. It's a six. Hmm. Lavina. Yeah. I think I was, I was going to give a six as well for my own personal rating because or ranking, because I just, it's the same thing. I just feel like he's been completely outplayed by Tyler. And I feel like there's, there is, there are routes for him to take to get to maybe bring it back together, bring that power, you know, the Enzo, the Tyler and himself back together, as we talked about previously, but it, it, it's it, we just don't know what's going to happen we don't know who's going to fall into power we don't know you know if certain conversations are leaked take place you never know yeah. it's so that's why i was i would give him a six um but also his positioning like his positioning as a as a you know as a lone player is okay it's still i, I would say good but it's just a matter of being outplayed like flat out and then melissa gave cody an eight and she said that he's well, pretty well insulated, which I do, I am inclined to agree with. Um, but he might lose Danny soon, and she's a good shield for him. Doesn't seem like the bullhorn really affected him, even though people are still talking about it. Okay, so uh, that means that Melissa is staying at an eight. Uh, that's where she was at last time. Um, I can tell you that the audience went with a seven for cody mm -hmm. Ooh, he, he, he landed that seven uh, that was a close one um and i am inclined to stick with the audience on this one uh yet again i guess wow uh that uh i feel like i was an eight last week i'm down to a seven this week um i i, I did consider a six i did because I don't like how he's handling the Tyler situation. I think it's a very risky way. I think he's uh, he's kind of he needs he needs a Derek there to be like, yeah. hey, 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 calm down. This is the game plan. Um, and instead, he's kind of just like, Oof, oof. He, um, he had a miserable day. Just FYI, um, uh, Lavina, when when were these ratings submitted to you by Melissa? I'm just curious, like timeline wise. So she submitted them to me two days ago, but then okay. she, last night she sent me a message literally at like 12 a.m. and said, I'm switching my Ian score, which we'll get to. So, but okay. that was so, the only one that good. she switched. Okay. Sounds good. Excellent. Oh boy. Um, all right. So, uh, yes. So I, I feel like, uh, I, I feel like he's been, he's been in some trouble, uh, with this and I don't love the way that he has been, um, handling the situation. Uh, on top of that, the wall yeller could benefit him. Or it could hurt him. 
depending on how it plays out. Um, and I could see him landing on the block next week, whereas that was never really going to happen this week. It was week. never true before. That's the thing. Like, Cody was totally insulated before, yeah. and now there are avenues for him to, for him to end up on the block. Uh, I'm not, like, coming for anybody or anything, but, like, I don't know how you can stay at the same score. Like, I feel like you, you, that has to be you – ha- you have to go down a point. You have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Melissa, get your act together. <laughs> I was surprised that she didn't change that one, but she's she's been off all podcast. Lavina, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> She's having a good time on her well-deserved vacation. <laughs> um, all right. So let's bounce back around to Memphis. Let's talk Who? Memphis. Is there a um, player in the house named Memphis, Taryn? You haven't even is. mentioned him on the updates. I haven't even yep. heard his name. Who I kept person? forgetting to tell you there have been events happening with Memphis. He actually he hurt his back. Um, yes, I keep forgetting I to mention on the updates. Um, it's it's starting to recover. In fact, last night he he walked out. They like I guess massaged it or I don't know. Uh, but he was like, "Look at me, I've got my back back." Um, <laughs> Which is a total idiot. What the hell is he doing? Like I heard, I heard Day and Bay talking about it. They were like considering, or maybe it's Day and Kevin. They were considering possibly putting up Memphis as a as a nominee, but they're like, "Oh, his back screwed up. He's not a threat anymore." Like what? Just like yeah. take the injury and go with it. What the hell are you doing, <laughs> idiot? So huh. just last week, I was saying that I, I was I was finding it difficult to bring Memphis up above a six just based on the fact that he has no plan yet, and I can't see his plan until it happens. However, considering everything that's happening, all the chaos, all the power shifting, all the potential game blowy uppies, uh, I actually really like where Memphis is sitting. He is so protected because while everyone's over here doing the fighty stuff he's literally just uh sitting in his chair drinking some you know coffee with his hood up talking in his morning show and he's not going anywhere anytime soon and uh with his back on the mend he can definitely win some comps down the stretch he still has a cody connection he's making a christmas connection i gave memphis a seven yeah, I did too. I, 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 what, like, for real, I'm not happy with the fact that he decided to out the fact that he's feeling a little bit better with his back, but he is so well positioned in the game. And as I've often said on this podcast, position, position is king. Memphis has an uncanny a way of mo- maneuvering himself, sometimes through like other people's actions, ending up in a really good spot. And like, I think that some of the stuff he had no impact on this week, but on the other hand, some, some of the fact, some of the things that, have happened this week are because of Memphis. He has done some good work with Christmas. He has done some good work with some of the house guests, at least seeming less grumpy, less disagreeable, trying to get along with people and, you know, get into the rhythm of the house. I do think he, and I don't even know how, how old do we know how old Memphis is now? Like 37. 37. I'm 45. And like, I know that if I was in the house, I'd be a little bit of a bitch for the first three or four (laughs) weeks. Like, it's just how you would be like, because you have your own routine, you're in, you have your own life. And uh, like he, I, he, I just don't think he was ready to go back into the Big Brother house. But now he's into it, and uh, like there's just no one coming for him. I never hear his name come out of anybody else's mouth, and he is a promising goat in some people's eyes to take to the final two. Ian said he wants to bring him to the final two, which I wish Memphis knew that because I think Memphis is chomping at the bit to have vengeance for Dan. Fuck vengeance yeah. for Dan. We need what to like, worry that? about yourself. Literally, Worry about yeah. yourself, Memphis. Yeah, yes. and and like as as everyone else, like because I always try to look at the game from like if I were if I were there and I were in the position of each player and I'm looking at the board, like uh, where does my next move go? And every time I do that this week, I go, "Wow, Memphis is super valuable," um, because that's right. w- how he's positioned himself. Yeah. And I was teetering with my personal score. I was teetering between a six and a seven. And I think I'm leaning more towards a seven just because after that HOH that he had, I think that the game that he's playing right now is, I think he's doing exactly what he needs to be doing after that HOH that he had, after that speech he gave about David, people weren't loving Memphis. They, they were just kind of like, uh, like Tyler, Tyler was like talking to the cameras. He was like, that guy's like, you know what? And you know, you, I think the only way that he may find himself on the block in like upcoming weeks, like, like the sooner weeks is if someone like David were to win, because he'd be like, you know what? I'm, I want to show him that, Ugh. yeah, I'm here to play and I deserve to be here. So I'm going to throw him up, whether he's the target or not. I think that's the only way, 
But besides that, I would give him a seven, but Melissa gave him, she, I'm not sure what her score was last time, but um, she's giving him a six and she wrote, he's hurt, which could be good for him game wise. I agree, I agree with that. And then she said she doesn't like his uh, doesn't like his name in people's mouths very much. Although he's losing a possibly good ally in Kaser, I like that the or I think that the remaining old school players will start to stand out more once the other old schoolers get picked off one by one. That could be true. All right. Excellent. So six for Melissa, and mm-hmm. then the audience gave the audience also gave Memphis a six, and it was also barely a six. It was yeah. uh, it was a close one, close call. As in almost a five? Yes, almost a yeah. five. They're yeah. so grumpy with Memphis. Memphis is grumpy with y'all, and y'all are grumpy with Memphis. But I'm kind of living for it. I don't know. Yeah. I kind of love I the grumpy too. Like, if all the, there's some problematic people in the house and some people that are really irritating us. Like, Memphis is, like, you know, definitely in the mid-tier of Joker's updates right now. Like, he's he used to be kind of hated, but uh, people were calling yep. him, like, Nashville and stuff. And, uh, like, he's definitely, like, risen. Uh, people, they're, they, people have other fish to fry right now. Memphis yeah. is fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, let's talk about Devon. Let's talk about Devon. Um, I can tell you quickly that the audience gave Devon a four last week. They gave Devon a four again this week. Lavina, where's Melissa at? So Melissa's with the audience. She's sticking with the four. And she didn't write too much. All she wrote is, I'm worried for Day. She seems to be high on Cody's hit list. Um, and I agree with that. And she is. Yeah. I'm not sure if I would give a four. I, I, I hate to say this because I love Davon and this absolutely sucks, but maybe I would give as low as a three just because I, I feel like she's just being targeted way too much. And I feel like she's could definitely find herself on the block next week. And that's, she's the reason why I didn't want to go a little bit higher on Bailey. And it, like you guys were saying similarly too. So it sucks, but I would probably give her a three. But Melissa's the four. Yep, I gave her a three. I did. I did go down to a, well, not down to a three. I actually I went up a point technically because she was at a two last week for me. I really was had. I had it up to here with Davon last week. I think that her position has improved really subtly, and she sometimes through herself and sometimes through other people like Kevin. Uh, is being prevented from fact checking and investigating and reporting and looking up people's conversations to check them out. She, she, like, it, it's, it's people and, and she is also doing it a little bit herself, but mostly people are saving her from herself. Uh, and, uh, like, I think that she could go home next week. I think if Bailey and Day end up on the block, I think Day goes home. I think the boys want to keep Bay and, uh, there are a lot of ways for this to go wrong, especially even if like, let's say Danny goes home this week, let's say Tyler gets HOH and Danny goes home or somebody else gets HOH and does what Tyler wants. And Danny is the backdoor target or something like that. I have to think then day's number is probably going to be up once Danny is out of the house. I mean, maybe if the balance of power changes in the house and people start infighting, maybe then there's an Avenue for her, but as things stand, I, I have to feel pretty shaky about Davon and it's not good. It's a three for me. Yeah, it's a four for me. Uh, I think that last week I gave her a four. I think it's a four again. Uh, her position is somewhat improved, but it's also not really improved very far. It's more of a stay of execution than it is a like yeah. long-term plan. Really uh, so yes, Danny going would be great because it saves Day, but then Day's in trouble again. Um, and she needs to do something to not be in trouble anymore. And that could happen through the Danny stuff, but it hasn't happened yet. So it's a four. So can we just, I don't mean to stop real quick because I know we're trying to move a little faster, but like, can we talk about what, what can Day do to change her fate? Like what, let's say Danny goes up on the block. Could they do something where they make a deal with Day, or sorry, with uh, Danny and save her? Like say, hey, like we're being pitted against each other. We need to work together. I, I don't know. Look, it's, it's tough because I think what she would need to do goes against who she is as a player. I think that what she should do is go back to Cody, who she had a great relationship with, relationship with at the start of the game, and say, look, 
Danny was always the one throwing, you know, things out at me, making me worried. Um, it was all Danny's fault. I'm totally with you now. You know, we have the poly connection. You've lost Danny. Like, uh, like I want you to be my person. Um, I'm, I'm jealous of Bay and and her things with Enzo and Tyler and them. And I want you, I want you to be yeah. my person. Um, and then like not fact check him, uh, and not make him get super weirded out by, uh, you know, the fact that she doesn't trust him. If she can make him feel like she trusts him, then Cody, who needs more people, will absolutely jump on that. And okay. Nicole's not coming for day. If Cody's not coming for day, uh, then it would have to be Tyler or Enzo, and they can't come for day with Bay there. So day all of a sudden at that point is fine. Um, but if she doesn't do that, then she's still vulnerable. Okay. All right. All right. Let's move on back over to Kevin. Let's talk about kevin um i gave him a three <laughs> last week yes. i am actually up on kevin just a little bit uh i gave him a four this week uh this power structure civil war thing has opened the game up for him a little bit um you know ian giving him information it's not still he still has terrible reads uh he's still all over the place um and in fact that might actually be a bad thing for his game because he was progressing in a certain direction and i i don't know if he's going to continue to progress in that direction but he made a connection with enzo and christmas and that is huge that is the thing that has really helped him on top of that the power structure the power struggle in the power structure has also helped him so those two things bump him up to a four for me he's still not playing well um but uh, but he also won a competition and that's great um it's part of why he was brought into something he's finally winning a little bit of respect in the house he's still got a long way to go before he becomes a contender but um he's on that path to becoming that sort of like hey we're gonna be cheering for kevin as the underdog later that i've been saying for you know a month now yeah so, show me uh, when that happens all right <laughs> so it's a four from me brent how do you feel yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I know, like, here's the thing. I know the game is probably maybe maybe possibly opened up for him a little bit, but there are also ways that the game could get shut down. And one of those ways happens to be through Kevin, who up until this point has shown me no reason to trust him on anything. He's been terrible when it comes to that. So if I'm trusting Kevin, it's like, I don't trust Kevin as far as I can throw him. I gave him a, what what did I give him last week? Give him a three last week? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I had I had four down. Boy, I never. Sometimes I change these on the fly, and I'm like, I forget to change them after the fact. I gave him a three last week. I'm giving him a three this week. I am not buying. I'm not buying this. I it's. it's I know that there are ways that this can go good for him, and and but there are also ways that Kevin can screw it up. And I think if you've seen anything about Kevin this season on Big Brother, he will find a way to screw it up. So it's a three. Yeah, um, I definitely agree. I personally would give him a three as well, just because those. Those damn reads, you guys. Those damn right. reads are you can just read a book. <laughs> right, a picture book. Uh, it's really, truly killing me a little bit to see him talk about how he views the house. So that's why I couldn't go. Because the thing is, is I would love to go up to a four personally, but I think that you know, obviously, with the I like that he's working with Enzo and Christmas now, but I don't. Those reads just just take it down for me. And uh, Melissa definitely agrees, and she gave him a three as well. And she wrote down, he won veto and doesn't really seem to be a target for people right now. But is he really even doing anything? And yeah. That's the question. What's he doing right now? Like, are you doing anything? And like, if, if the only thing he ends up doing is something bad by spilling the beans on this uh, Ian theory and, and it's shutting down the Danny thing, I'm going to be really fed up with him. Like, more fed up with him than we are right now. And he, uh, Melissa gave him a two last week and gave him a three this week. So, like, uh, he, he's, still, he's still not in great shape. All right. The audience... In a, this is it's literally a 3.49. Um, so the audience gave him a three, barely, almost went to a four, but went with a three overall. So there it is for Kevin. Now let's bounce back around to David. And the audience gave David <laughs> a two. Yes. Yeah. I'm sticking with my one until <laughs> shown anything else. I do not trust this man. I don't think he understands the game of Big Brother. Uh, maybe position-wise, you could find a way to say that he has an avenue or a foothold within the game, but I really 
don't believe it. I don't believe there's any way that this man can win this season of Big Brother. I'm, I just refuse to accept that. So right now it's a one. Oh, wait, I need to get, I'm sorry. I need to keep this paddle handy for. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Great. Levina. Um, you know, I, I'm honored to be a part of a Brett one paddle podcast. Super honored. Um, but Melissa went with a two and she said, <laughs> I love the first sentence she wrote. She wrote, he's still here, I guess, question <laughs> mark. Um, <laughs> that's such shade. That's such shade, <laughs> Melissa. Oh my gosh. That's like Janelle shade where she was like, <laughs> like, I guess when she was talking about Nicole, like she was saying, Janelle was like, like, I, you know, she invited me to her wedding and then she's like, whatever. Like, I guess she doesn't have anything going on in that shit town that she lives in up there. Like, she never <laughs> like, I, like I was like, oh yes. Here you Janelle. Anyway, but yes, go on, go on with the Melissa shade. I'm sorry. She, <laughs> So I loved that. And then she yes. said, also, Enzo likes him enough to keep him off the block. He's not actively, in all caps, actively destroying his game this week. So I'll give him a pass on the paddle. Well, uh, it seems like Melissa is the one that's going to save David from the one this week. Because I did drop down to a one uh, for David. Because, look, this week includes the David thing. Right? And that we was forget that. an all-time... Yeah bad move uh you know like so we 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 tend to factor in two things two main things when we were talking about the rating one is their overall positioning to win the game and another is how did they play this week uh for me that's why tyler's a nine not an eight because he played so well and for me that's why david's a one and not a two because he played so poorly yes i think there's still a microscopic chance that david wins this game but I have to say, no, David, you do not deserve anything but the lowest rating when this is the kind of thing that you do in the house. It was so bad. Um, and he went around the house for almost a week afterward, uh, like saying that Davon betrayed him and Davon was coming for him. Like, that's just oof, nonsense. So absolute nonsense. Like, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know where he's coming from on that. Uh, I, I does. It does uh, make me laugh in that Melissa and I were so fed up with David last week that he wasn't wasn't on the block, and we gave him ones because we were so pissed at his play. And the thing with Tyler hadn't even happened yet. It happened later that night on Tuesday. That's when it all happened. We were we were annoyed with David because of his conversation with Janie. That's where that came from. We were so mad because he didn't even know what game he was living in when he was talking to Janelle and Kaser. Kaser, the guy he was going to vote for, he was basically like saying, you have no credit. I don't trust you, girl, bye. Like, whatever. He didn't say girl, bye. But you know what I mean. And, uh, <laughs> like, he's just, uh, like, it just boggles my mind that we gave him a one. And then he went and did that. Ugh. It might as well be a zero at this point. Like, I would, I... You guys know my rating. It's a one. If I could give lower than a one, then I would, but yeah. I can't. So, all right, let's go. flip back around to Kaser. I'm wa I'm eyeing you, Brent. I'm I'm watching. No. I listen here. Here's the thing. I have to. I have to. He is guaranteed to go home this week. I love yeah. Kaser. He is. He's going to go home ten to zero. And the worst part about it. It didn't have to be this way, Taryn. I know, I know. <laughs> you know it didn't have to be this way. He had an out. He had maybe a couple outs. He just needed to do what I talked about at the beginning of the podcast when I was talking about my little run on sequester and like play a little bit more social. Don't overplay. Reel yourself in. Even if like, I know that he, he at one point said something very similar to how I used to think of myself where he was like, like, look, like they brought me in here for a reason. I'm here to fuck shit up. Like, that's what he said. But I'm like, no, that is not why they brought you back in the house. They brought you here to win the game. You're here to win the game. You're not here to have shit up. So I, you have to hold him accountable for that. Yeah. And here's the thing. It's like, he wants to F shit up shit up but the thing is is this cast isn't the one to be doing that with because they're not they're they're just like what is this guy doing what what are all these calculated conversations we're having they're not going to care they're going to say you're calculated we're voting you out period and that's the thing and it sucks because you know and going back to the sequester thing like 
same thing. Like I, I also like when I play sequester, the first two times I played, I was so calculated and I was like guns blazing, like, here's a name, throw a name, whatever. But the third time I was completely social and I just made friends. And even though it might not be the funnest thing to watch for the fans, you got to get yourself out of that hole, you know? So it just, he yeah. needs to do something about that, but he, it's, it's too late at this point. He's not going to be making those relationships and making people happy and excited. So yeah. if there were to be my score, since, since mine don't count and I love Kate, you guys know how much I love Kate. So I'm going to yeah. give him a 10 as a goodbye. Yeah. Let's give him a, let's give him a 10. Yeah, the chat wanted goodbye. that. They were like, Brent, you forget Aww. the zero behind your one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there you like, go, you guys. Uh, like, I just, uh, I'm, I'm really like, I saw someone in the chat say, what out? Are you blind? Like, were you missing? Were you not watching the feeds? Did you not see that the, the Genzo's heart isn't even in it? He doesn't want Kaser to go home, but Kaser freaking clocked his alliance to his face. He just seems incapable of not playing hard 100% of the time. And I'm not yeah. even asking him to, to not be himself some of the time. He could be himself some of the time when he's HOH or when his team has power. But right now he had to recognize, I don't have any power in the game and what I've been doing hasn't been working. I have to reset. I have to do different things. I have to make people understand that I am not a threat to them. Mm -hmm. that I will work with them, that I will not come for the big alliance in the house. I am not here for that. I'm going to go after all the floaters. If he said that to Enzo before it, Enzo became HOH and, and Cody knew about it, I think there's a way that Kaser could have stayed in the game. I really do. Yeah. And um, Melissa had quite a, a few things to say about Kaser. I'm sorry. Um, she, oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> um, she basically wrote out, poor Kaser. He's trying, but it's falling. It's falling on completely deaf ears. I get that he wants to play hard, which we do love to see, but I can't help but think that if he just lay low this week, he could have survived. Also, as a side note, I hate that people are getting mad at him for campaigning. Totally true. Do, do they want him to just lie down and take it? Also, every time Kaser campaigns to people and is basically laying out exactly what's happening in the game and the, their position in it, he leaves the room and they say, He's gone crazy. He's lost it. Um, no, you guys are just too hard-headed to see that he's right. And she gave him a two. Uh, I, I, can literally, I can literally hear Melissa. I can hear it too. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, she wrote the most on Kaser, who's leaving this week. Yeah. Actually, she wrote the most on Enzo, but we'll get to okay, that. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> um, the audience gave Kaser a three this week. Um, it was it wasn't the four time. that Janelle got, but yeah. uh, it was a three. Um, there's one thing I liked from Kaser this week. I liked his initial pitch to Enzo. I think he handled it really well. I think he made some progress. The problem is that he had already backed himself into a spot that he couldn't get out of just by one having by by one good conversation. But unfortunately, really, like usually my criteria for giving somebody a one if they're not. Like, uh, like it's if you're an all time bad play like David, I'll give you a one. If you're on the block and you're a lock to go home, then that's usually a two. If it's your fault and you are actively making it happen and there's something that you could have been doing that isn't even that hard to get yourself out of it. And like you're actively making sure that you are going to remain the target. I, I give you a one. It's what I do. Um, and it hurts. It hurts my heart. But uh, I do have to give Kaser a one this week. It just it didn't have to be this way. It really didn't. Um, and I don't know. It's not 100 percent that he would have stayed. It's definitely not. Uh, he could have done something and still gone home for sure. But he didn't. He didn't even try. He stuck to the same game plan that failed the last three times he tried it. Um, and it's what i got it's what i got yeah yeah he still he just kept trying to fit a square peg into a round hole and that just doesn't work like that's not the game that's in front of him he has to play the game that's being played not the game that he wants them to be playing it's like caser wants big brother six where like it's back yeah. and forth and it's fun and it's exciting and like you know all the lines are drawn and everybody knows who's with everybody like that's the game he wants to play i feel like but that's not the game that any of these people are playing yeah all right, let's bounce back around to Danny. Let's talk about Danny. Um, Danny was a six last week, straight sixes last week. Everybody gave her a six. The audience uh -huh. has gone down on Danny. They gave her a four. 
this week? Brent, thoughts? So, um, I, 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 like, I feel like almost bad about this. Cause like, I'm not feeling Danny right now. And let me just like, before I give you my rating, let me just read her the riot act for some of the things that she's been saying about Bailey in the house. Like, obviously somebody took their implicit bias training, not to heart, because I don't even think that Danny realizes some of the problematic things that she said in regard to some of the house guests of color in the house, the particular comment that she had about Bailey stealing Janie's dress was so like off the charts bad that I can't believe that when she then said it out loud that she then didn't say, Oh, that sounded really bad. Like, I mean, like, cause sometimes that happens as humans. Like we say stuff and then we're like, Oh wow, that didn't sound good. And like, you know, you recognize, wow. uh, you know, some people do, Brent. like you recognize, you, rec <laughs> you recognize that you used to said something that you should not have, and then you bring you reel it back in. But goddamn woman, like uh, like uh, Bailey of all people, does not need to steal. It just reinforces this shitty myth that people of color steal shit. And she also uses words like sneaky and untrustworthy. And I know that she's targeting Bailey, and so like I'm I'm well aware of the. Uh, a tried and true mantra on the Big Brother house of trying to villainize uh, somebody who you are targeting. But I do think that she has done it in a way that is unbecoming of her. I, have, so I see some of the people in the chat. No, I don't think that Danny's a racist. I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying she's a racist. I'm just saying that she said some things that are on their face. And if you held them up to her, she would acknowledge are problematic. They, are, they have no place in the game. And she, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed in her that she did not recognize that she made some mistakes. Insofar as her rating this week, I think that the ground is completely shifted underneath her. And again, like I said about Cody, the worst part is she got no freaking clue that there's a big storm coming. So I gave her a three. As far as her actual work in this house over the past week, she has been completely snowed by Tyler. She doesn't realize that many people are considering putting her up. She doesn't even know the true extent about what's happening with Bailey and, and Bailey and, and day in regards to Tyler and how close they are. And she doesn't even know that Cody, her ostensibly her number one or number two ally in the house isn't even telling her that she's in severe danger going into next week. She doesn't even have that. So how well can she be playing? Obviously not very well. So it's a three. All right. Uh, I, I was with the audience on this one. I gave her uh, four. Um, I do. I think she's in a lot of danger um, and she could very easily end up going home next week. But there's also a decent amount of people that might not target her next week. And the longer she has to uh, to like get out of this, the better. Not to mention, again, this Ian thing could really save her. Um, and that's that's something to uh, to pay attention to. And while I think she's made a lot of mistakes and I've criticized her game a lot, um, she's also still like uh, she's not, she's no slouch. She has caught on to the fact that something is wrong. Um, just today, she was like, I think Bailey and Day are flipping on us. Um, like, she has already found out that that she's she's going to be in the, in the target seat. The, she just doesn't know that it's Tyler. Uh, she doesn't know Tyler or Enzo that are involved. See, I, he I heard her say that, and I took that like as just like normal trashing Bailey bullshit. Oh, no, no, she Because okay. basically, Bailey went to Christmas and said, hey, I've got some info for you after the next HOH. Oh, right, I forgot um, about that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, so yeah, okay. Christmas yeah. told Nicole, and uh, and Nicole told Danny, and Danny was like, whoa, uh, that's weird. Um, I, th I wonder what that is. She's probably aiming to get us targeted, me targeted, um, because by telling her about the Slick Six. And so that's like, she's very concerned, which is exactly what it is. Um, yeah. So uh, she, she caught on to that, um, but she doesn't know that Tyler and Enzo are in it as well. So that's where she's she's behind. But she could catch up, especially with Cody trying to like uh, be like eh, over here. Um, so who knows? But it's a four from me. Uh, the 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 dumb rogue vote was dumb. 
that happened this well, week. That's especially worth... after she outed it. Yeah, she told yeah. Cody about it. He rejected her, and then she did it anyway. That's a two play right there. That's a terrible play. Um, she got outplayed by Tyler. She's in a lot of danger. Um, last week, I said her game is balancing on the on a coin's edge, and she could be in, in danger as early as next week. And here it is. But uh, but for all the reasons I said, I didn't go quite below a four. Lavina, what do you have? So uh, Melissa and I both agree we've got a four for Danny and all that she wrote was Danny is in big trouble with a ton of eyes. Um, and yeah, I, I think that she is in big trouble, but I think that the reason that I wouldn't go down to a three, which I very well could have is because of the fact that she, a, she has a lot of time, um, in between now and, you know, poss possibly on Thursday to figure out, Hey, you know, um, why did I lose my train of thought? Um, it's okay. yeah. It happens to me all the time. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, do you, did you get it back or you want to? No, yeah, I got it back. Okay, I got okay, it back. Cool. Got um, it, cool. No, uh, so she it, she has plenty of time to c catch on to the fact that it's possibility of Tyler and Enzo aren't exactly with her. And granted, she is very much missed by Tyler. Um, but I just, I, I, I don't think I would go down two or three just for that fact. Also, you never know what's going to change in the house and the culture of the house. They may not end up wanting to take that shot. They could end up with power and they could say, you know what, let's not do this this week. Let's not do this yet. You never know. You just got to think about what, what all the possibilities could be. And I really do think that I, I, there's, there's a more likely scenario in which Davon and Bigley end up on the block before her. All right. So let's bounce back around to Ian. 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 Tricky, tricky spot here. I gave him a five last week. Um, yeah. I'm curious about your rating this week because I, I, I definitely went one way or the other. <laughs> I, I did decide that to go one way, and that way is is down. I gave him a four. Um, I don't like the direction that he's heading in. Um, he first of all wasn't a lot of danger this week. Could have gone home if Caser won that veto. Um, right. Second, uh, he he's really on this kick of like uh, like the first thing he said yesterday in the morning was I'm fine with making it to eight or nine because I can comp my way to the end. I think he's wrong about that. I think he doesn't realize that the competitions are different and he won't be able to do that anymore. Um, then he said, I'd rather go out now than eight or nine, um, which I'm not sure if he's telling the truth or if that's just sort of like for the benefit of the people he's talking to. But I also don't love that. Um, I, I think that um, with everything that's happened with Danny, Ian caught a break. He was he like he was in danger. He still would have been in some danger, but with Danny going up and with this you know pending power structure uh, power struggle, um, Ian was going to become a lot more valuable to Cody. Um, and instead of just Nicole protecting Ian, you would have seen Cody trying to. Uh, he still would have thrown Ian in front of Nicole if he needed to, but. Um, Cody would would protect Ian from anybody but Nicole, I think, um, and. People like Enzo and Tyler and Bay and Day would all go after Nicole before Ian now because of the wall yeller. Um, so he like the wall yeller helped him a lot, but he's taken that and been like, mm, I want to go in a different direction. Um, yeah. And it's not the best direction either, because, again, he's aiming at the wrong people. It's like it was he was aiming at the wrong people even before the power shifted. Now, Tyler's the one in control, so he's way far off. Today, he was talking to Kaser, and he was like, I just can't connect Tyler to any of this. Uh, I really feel like Tyler's on the outs oh of God. this. Like, he's on, he's not in the core of this. Um, and it was like, oh, man, that uh, wall yellow really spun your head in the wrong direction here. <laughs> yeah. So, for me, it's a four. I think he's, like, in some serious danger very soon. Yeah, uh, Brian Conway actually said it best in the chat. Uh, Ian thinks he's five steps ahead. That's the problem. He th he thinks he's got it all figured out, and that he knows exactly what's going on. He knows where all the bodies are buried. Uh, it's it's a little like it's a little bit weird with Ian because on one hand we were upset that he was seemingly was doing nothing. We're like, where is Ian this season? What is he doing? And then on the other hand. Now that he's actually doing something, we're like, no, 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 don't do that. That's yeah, not good. Yeah. Like, uh, you're doing the wrong thing. Well, but it's, it's not like, sorry ahead. to interrupt, but it's like, no. it's, it's like, um, it's, it's almost, it's a similar problem to Devon. Like, he got this information, and his first reaction to it was, 
spill it everywhere. Just <laughs> the entire thing. He just dumped it on Kevin's head. Like, that's not an effective way to play the game. If you have this information that's super valuable to you, keep it in your head and use it. First of all, like, try and see if it's true. Like, uh, talk to people. Uh, get a better sense of, like, because Ian's Ian is, again, similar to Devon. He's looking at this like it's a big puzzle piece. Like, he's fitting the pieces in different places, and he's saying, well, these people must be with these people, and, and these people are connected to Derek, and therefore that must mean that these people are over here. Um, and he's not actually looking at the relationships in the house and w how those matter. Uh, and so, inst like, he's, he's, he's looking at it like... like from from the he's he, he even mentioned the uh the the twitter account that likes to post the alliance charts um that uh, he's like oh I'm, i need to figure out the alliance chart but it's like <laughs> no no just look at the relationships in the house that's all you really need to know um and i feel like a lot of the players in this game are really concerned about not looking like the fool not looking like the people who didn't know about the big alliance and they're all which so... happened to ian on his original season exactly and he's and aware of that they're <laughs> hellbent on figuring out the alliance chart instead of working within the relationships that actually exist in the house yeah mm -hmm. uh so i gave Ian a three uh i again as i mentioned i so I, i'm sure like people were coming for me because it's like look Ian was doing shit before we were mad at him now he's doing something we're mad at him so but it's he's doing the wrong thing he's not aiming at the right people uh it's not he's not in, it's not even in his best interest because he caught a break now it's true the break the break as it stands is really nothing to do with him it's tyler you know making a play against danny and obviously that doesn't really affect it, it doesn't it didn't come from ian but it affects ian and he can't He's, he has a seeming inability to recognize that he's caught a break. He's continuing on this on this path when in real actuality, what he's doing may shut down what's happening in the game right now. And that would really, really suck for us really bad. So all like, if I could just put a muzzle on Ian for the, for the next, you know, two days, that'd be good. On the other hand, he's already told Kevin, he's already told Bay. So like the secret's out at this point, it's just how far is it going to go and how is it going to land once it gets there? So. And, and, I, and I have to reiterate, the wall yeller pointed him at Cody and Nicole, who are his two most valuable people within the power structure. Co uh, uh, Ian's move is to take out the Tylers and the Enzos. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are the people that are dangerous to him because he has no connection to them and they power Cody and Nicole. If he takes those people out, then Cody and Nicole have to rely on him more. Uh, uh, if he takes Cody out or Nicole out, uh, you know, inadvertently by shooting her name out there, then he loses his only connection to the power structure. And now it's just Tyler in charge who has no connection to Ian whatsoever and will absolutely want him. And Enzo, who wants out the champs. Um, and like Enzo's like the one person that Ian is like, nah, don't go after Enzo. Um, and it's just, it's all wrong. Yeah. Yep. Um, so this is the score that Melissa wanted to change last minute. So she initially, so she rigged him before last week. Um, and she was initially down on him from as if, as of a couple of days ago when she sent me all of her scores, but, um, and she had gone down to a three initially, but she took it back up to a four as of literally, I guess today at midnight, she messaged me and said, actually, wait, hold on. I'm changing Ian. And her original um, note for him for the three was Ian is high on the radar. He was almost backdoored this week. And he seems like he's content as being with being a lackey for Nicole. And then she said, why? <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then her switch over to up to a four, she noted he has a great read on the house, but let's see what he, let's see what he can do with it. I still think he's in a bad position. And I do agree with that. I think that, you know, at any moment they can just switch over and say, oh, wait, Ian's back to being the next target because this whole time entering this week was me seeing Ian as next as, you know, the, the bad guy coming after K or going, who's going to be leaving after Kaser and Janelle. And obviously things have changed. Things have uh, shifted up a bit, but uh, uh, shifted a bit, but I could see them shifting right back as we've been saying and Ian could just be the next one to go easily backdoored possibility once again next week. Yes, uh, the audience actually is also down on Ian. They gave him a five this week and compared to the uh, compare uh, comparison to the six they gave him last week, um, which kind of surprised me. I think uh, I, I didn't I didn't fully expect that the audience would would kind of agree that this is actually bad for Ian's game, um, but they do. All right, let's talk about the final person right there in the middle it's enzo uh 
Lavina, start with you. I was going to ask you, can I please go first? Because Melissa wrote out a thesis statement about this. And I'm like wanting to prepare my read on this because I don't want to mess this up. So I'll read you the score afterwards. Let's just read the statement first. For Enzo, Melissa feels boring. I'm bored. He keeps saying he wants to take out a big target and make a big move, but he doesn't want to do it on his own HOH. He wants someone else to do it. I'm afraid that he'll just keep kicking the can down the road and then it'll be too late for him to actually do anything in the game. Also, he has now gotten gotten all this intel about separate alliances but doesn't inc- that don't include him and it seems like his response is just shrug. Further, he's getting, that was in caps, He's getting rid of Kaser, who had absolutely no intention to target him and will be a shield in front of him. He basically put his hands over his ears anytime people came up to him to talk to him in the HOH room. People were trying to give him information, but instead of listening and actually talking it, talking it in, he just opened his mouth in all caps. You can't listen if you're too busy talking, Enzo. I don't think he used his HOH wisely, but I can't give him too low a score because I don't think he's going to be targeted anytime soon. Plus, I do have to give it to him. He has a good way of making you feel like he's totally with you during your conversations. Even if the second you leave the room, he's like, yeah, that was garbage. And all of that is wrapped up into a six for Enzo. (laughs) Yeah, that's not where I thought that was going. I was ready for you to say... It's an eight. It's an eight. Uh, I, I gave him an eight. I, I mm-hmm. felt good about Enzo's play this week. I feel like, look, here's the thing. I understand where Melissa's coming from. You know, the, the Meow Meow said all these things. and But I'll, to be fair to him, some of the stuff that came from the diary room, I do feel like was sort of diary room prompted about him trying Definitely. to like say like he was going to do this, he's going to do that. When, when in reality, he was really always going to go after Kaser or at least initially try to put him up on the block and hope that maybe he wins veto, which would allow him to do something else bigger but Kaser didn't win veto and here's the other thing you have to remember and I talked about this in my Kaser talk Kaser made it impossible for Enzo to do anything other than to do what he's doing right now I can't hold it against uh Enzo that Kaser played bad uh, I feel like Kaser has tied Enzo's hands he, mm-hmm. he said to his face here's the people in power here's what I'm gonna do if I stay in you're not in power of course like Enzo really is in power, not in literal power in the HOH, but Enzo is with the people that Kaser was saying, I'm going to target. So I don't see how Enzo could have done anything other than do what he did. Is it boring? Yes. I'll clock him for being boring as hell, but it's a boring eight where I'm coming from. And I, I don't think that anything can be argued about that. And I think that that's where Melissa is coming from. It's just the matter of her being frustrated and, you know, she's bored. That's cool. and- <laughs> I've given out a couple of those sometimes where I've had it up to here with people. I mean, Danny, like maybe you, maybe she's a you know, maybe she's a little bit more four. I gave her a three cause I'm, I've had it with her. So right. I, I get where she's coming from. It's no shade. I just uh, was like, we were blown away. That's what was, that's not what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, to, for me personally, I would also give him an eight. I'm super high on Enzo. I think that he's in the best position in the house after Tyler. Such winner equity. Yes. Like, can for we sure. talk about that? Like mm-hmm. winner equity. Like I talked about this with David. Like he has no winner equity whatsoever. Can't possibly win the game. Enzo has it in spades. Maybe almost too much. He's won three competitions and everybody loves him. I think eventually people are going to look around and say, we got to get rid of this guy. But for right now, he's just looking so, so good. Taryn, break the tie. I mean, l- l- here's the thing. I was list- like, when you said she wrote a thesis on, on, on en- Enzo, I was like, all right, here we go. She wrote about how great a spot Enzo's in. Um, <laughs> but then it went in a different direction. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. okay, she's mad that he's, you know, he's, he's mad he's sorry, in case her. Um, but uh, but she, you know, she's not going to give him too low a score. She's going to stick with her eight. Um, and then I heard you say, S-, and I was like, oh, wow, a seven. seven. Yeah, um, I know, right? <laughs> and then you said, X. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> to me, Enzo is, uh, if, if, if we did half scores here, Enzo is the best score of the night for me. Uh, Tyler was almost an eight. Enzo is a solid nine for me. Um, I love where Enzo is right now. Um, he is in all of the, he has all the benefits of the Tyler power maneuver with none of the downsides where this could blow up on Tyler and cause some trouble for him. Uh, Enzo is clean for the most part and, and, and Tyler will take the heat because he's the bigger player he's the bigger target he's the more threatening presence um enzo still has his connection to cody he's still locked in 
with the rest of the core four um I, enzo can kind of just get away with more just because yeah. of who he is um yeah. and i think and he also has a great bond with day and bay tyler does as well but enzo's been working on it he also made a new thing with christmas and kevin which is really good for him i love where enzo's at i think it's better than where tyler's at especially with cody being upset with tyler um i would give enzo a 10 if he was as active a player as tyler um where like he was the one putting himself here instead of tyler kind of putting him here um i still feel like tyler is a more capable player overall all, but I but position wise Enzo can't be beat uh, so I, I gave him a nine and I honestly I thought he, I thought he was gonna make a nine to this week um, but I guess that is not in the cards for dear Enzo the audience went with an eight for Enzo so uh, there it is I think I think that'll keep him at an eight that'll but, keep him at an uh, eight yeah, yeah. And he, so uh, Melissa he, didn't. He, he, Melissa yeah. six. I know people are probably mad at this. Didn't change anything. He wouldn't have made a nine anyway. Yeah, she, yeah exactly. Yeah. If, even if she gave him an eight, it still would have been an eight. So yeah. like, uh, she that's not going to change anything. And he, but he, and he is going to make a lot of money for people that stayed with him because he had an eight, and he maintained the eight. And we reward good, solid, consistent play around here at the Stock Watch. Yes. All right. So. I like, Say that with a hair flip. <laughs> <laughs> My, this um, is my last week for my hair you guys i'm getting it cut this is my <laughs> quarantine mane and I'm, I'm having fun with it tonight melissa had a week this week uh yeah. it's <laughs> she's not even here to defend herself i, I hope i did all right often. i like this this is fun I, she, the, she, the chat just blew up when they heard that yeah, yeah. she's she's just she's just like off camera like chucking bombs at us yeah um right. that's the stock watch for this week uh let's talk a little bit about some of the other questions here uh, i asked you to rate the episodes this week and you guys said 5.3 down from a 5.7 last week uh how do you rate the feeds a 5.9 up from a 5.1 last week um i uh i personally would go even higher than that for the feeds just feeds just for good. the last couple yeah, of days yeah. alone um and then the season as a whole so far, last week was a 5.6, this week a 5.5. So a little bit down still um, from last week. I asked you to rank the players from your favorite to your least favorite. Last week, it was Janelle, followed by Kaser. This week, Tyler, back on top. Okay. That's Excellent. where he was all of Big Brother 20. Right. Yep. Finally has retaken the position here uh, for um, for Big Brother 22. Followed very, very closely by Kaser. Um, and then in the number three spot, Bailey. I was going to stick at Bailey. Yeah, yeah, I felt like that's where the fans would be. Yeah. Um, then we have Enzo, Ian, Devon, Cody, Christmas, Memphis, Danny, Kevin, Nicole and David oh, at the very dear. bottom. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Whatsoever. Fans are, fans are really, they really have not had any patience for David. They really are. Yeah, the people in the house, the people outside the house, they are just like, they, yeah, you're right. They tried at the beginning of the season. They tried. They said, let's give this guy a chance. Like he had, you know, we thought he had good reads last season. Uh, <laughs> okay. You know, they, 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 obviously they don't cast a lot of men of color on the show. So they didn't have a great pool to draw from. Let's give this guy a chance. He never really got a chance last season. Let's see what he can do. But it has not proven to be an effective experiment. And both the people in the house and the people outside of the house have revolted against it. <laughs> Yes. Um, all right. I asked also strategically who should Enzo have targeted this week for his game. Um, usually the audience tends to agree with the decision. Even last week, they agreed with Tyler. This week, though, they did not agree with Enzo. They said that Danny should have been the target. 37% of the vote said Danny should have been the target for Enzo this week. I, I am going to disagree with that. Personally. I agree yeah. as well. I, I mean, I agree with you. You agree Danny, to disagree. I agree to disagree. Danny should not have been the target. For the, for these people in the house, for them, how could they not put up Kaser, you guys? He's telling mm -hmm. them to their face he's coming for them. Like, even if I was a fan of Kaser and I wanted to work with him, if he's telling me to my face that he's coming for Taryn and Melissa, I'm like, I can't have you here. Like, I can't have you yeah. as much as I love you. Okay, Cody and Tyler go up on the block. One of them wins the veto. 
Who's the replacement, Kaser? Uh, yeah. Even yeah. if even if right now you don't think I'm that attached to them, I guarantee you that when they go up on the block, things are going to start coming out, uh, and I my attachment to them is going to be exposed, and I'm going to be in trouble. Um, like it's just it's just not good. It's just not good. Um, twenty eight percent of the vote went for Kaser. That Kaser was the right uh, target. Um, and then in third place with seventeen percent of the vote, Ian they felt like was the right move. Um, Ian, I do think is a, that's a little bit more okay than Danny, I do think. Mm. But you still have to deal with Kaser. Um, and well, now that Ian knows about every, all the stuff and he's going to target people, Ian might've been an okay shot, but you know, he can't predict a wall yeller. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I asked you who you want to be evicted this week. This is actually a little surprising. Um, 73% said Christmas. 26% said Kaser. Um, I think some people are just kind of like, yeah. all right, get it over with. Because at this point, a lot of people, I've seen a lot of consensus online of fans just saying, get that man out of the house, get him back to his family. These people wanted nothing to do with him, just, you know, from the beginning, I mean, and just get him back home. All right. And then I asked, who do you want to win HOH next week? I did not include Kaser in this list because... Uh, don't waste your votes, guys. Um, <laughs> right. But also because, like, uh, like even if Kaser somehow stays, like, that's not a part of this conversation. So it's no. not worth, you know. Um, people said Bailey at the top with 29% of the vote, followed closely by Tyler. Um, and then in third place uh, with 20%, Ian. Bailey, Tyler, and Ian are the people that, uh, that the audience are rooting for to win HOH. I'm good with that. Yep. I'm good with good Tyler and Bailey. Let's do that. Although I trust Tyler more than Bailey. Yeah. Bailey might do something crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I can't believe I'm saying I want Tyler to be at show age. He's the only <laughs> one that'll do what needs to be done. <laughs> All Everyone right. Everyone else is too weak-minded. That might be easily influenced by people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Let's just do a quick check of the leaderboard, which I don't think has been updated yet here so maybe we will wait until a later date to do that um yeah. it says the stock watch is unavailable right now thank you for your <laughs> patience okay. uh it's it's fine i'm um, uh, we uh you know it's yeah. there the amount of users is way beyond wild absolutely <laughs> wild okay so i'll just go ahead and disclose like uh taryn what did you, what did you buy this week? i did i did buy tyler so uh, buy tyler. i i should be looking good this week i i purchased bailey uh i felt like here's the thing she like like, I Did knew Bailey... she was in a little bit of danger. I think she maintained. Like, uh, yeah, she maintain yeah. Five? state of five. Yeah, yeah. No I movement. thought it was going to be worse than that, but it, it ended up being okay. I thought I thought she had a, uh, I thought she had a six last week, but she had a five. Anyways, the point being that uh, I uh, bought Bailey because I felt as though I knew she was in danger, but I always felt like Dave Bomb was going to go home over Bailey, even if they did end up in danger. And I felt like then Bailey would have a long run in front of her. And I also felt like that there were other ways for her not to go up on the block. And – she was rated at a five originally last week when I, when I did the stock. And so I was like, I think that she could get up to a six. Like I, I you know, you, you, I, I, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll look at like what the score really was, like, what was it down to the decimal point and see like, you know, is there, was she close to getting a six last time or something like that? And Bailey has been rated higher typically mm -hmm. in our uh, stock watch. And also the audience tends to, uh like bailey they they do tend to enjoy her play and as you can see with franzel and some other people in the house like getting lower scores you can see with caser and janie getting higher scores than they should have the audience is susceptible to a little bit of favoritism so i felt like bailey was a solid buy obviously i was wrong i mean i think it wasn't uh, wasn't a terrible uh you know plan i think um she let me see the audience did she, come yeah. they came close to a six um okay. But uh, I, I, if I had to guess, um, that she's she's been a little bit sort of curt with Kaser, um, and that I think has has waned some of that shine off a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think for some people, that would be my yeah. guess. Yeah, and I'll just say something about that really quickly because I saw Kaser's wife tweeted something really really sweet about Bailey. Uh, yeah. Like you know, Bailey was uh having some words with Kaser and obviously we didn't like to see that because it feels like she's kicking Kaser when he's down and we know that part of what say what K 
Kisa is saying is true. But you have to look at it from her point of view as well. No one likes to be told that they're stupid. And that's how Bailey perceived it. It's not about the intent. It's about the impact. I learned this uh, from some of my friends in Sequester. It's about the impact of what you're saying. And what Kisa was saying to Bailey was, you're stupid. You don't see what's happening right in front of you right now. And it didn't make Bailey feel good. And she wasn't in a good mood already. And that's why she was, you know, in anywhere between Kurt and lashed out at, at uh, Kaser. But I, I did notice that uh, Kaser's wife said on Twitter, uh, like, you know, hey, be nice to Bailey. Uh, like, this is how friends talk with each other when they're irritated with each other. Like, they, they're, they, the reason she can be as honest with Kaser as she is being is because she likes Kaser and generally genuinely is friendly with him so i mean mm-hmm. in that part of that may be true part of that maybe not but nevertheless it it i i wasn't as put out with bailey as a lot of people were when that was happening yeah. and that was one of the most positive things i've seen on twitter in the past like week at least on big brother twitter like when i saw that i was like that is the sweetest thing. Like I have it pulled up right now and James Ryan is on the, on the side and he commented saying, you're going to bring this old man to tears. Yeah, I know, so, right? Yeah, I love she that. She really, really, really had something sweet to say about Bailey there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I can say that uh, Tyler was the most popular purchase uh, of the week uh, by a pretty decent margin. Um, so a lot of people made a lot of money this week. Uh, Enzo was the second most popular purchase. So I think uh, people did pretty well this week overall. It would be my guess. Christmas, the third most popular pic. So that one was not... not Sorry about your lock on that one. Um, <laughs> she really screwed a lot of people I knew, that, I knew she was like top three, top four buys because the chat was not happy with those scores. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm right there with you. I purchased Bailey. She didn't make me a dime. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay uh so that's that's what we've got for the week um any final thoughts lavina nothing i'm just super excited to see how everything plays out obviously we have a very you know straightforward week this week and that sucks but at the end of the day there's a lot of stuff that's brewing and ready to blow up any second so i'm just super excited to see hoh i feel like i'm like that every week though i'm like i know who's going home I'm cool on the eviction. I want to see who's winning HOH and I hope it's live because I love when it's live. I hate when we have to go to the feeds. Even though I love endurance competitions, I just feel like I want it to be live and I want to know who wins. Yes. Speaking of, um, I don't have like complete confirmation about whether it's live or not. So last week we closed the window at 6 p.m. Eastern if you want to trade at realitystockwatch.com. We're going to do the same thing this week. Um, If it does turn out to be live, Maybe we'll extend it, but don't plan for that. Plan don't for six. Don't count PM. on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, so that's six p.m. Eastern closing time. Brent, any final thoughts? No final thoughts. Uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that this season picks up the pace. Like, if like if past this prologue, we're gonna get a really shitty HOH this week, and nothing's gonna happen because nothing has happened this season on Big Brother. But I'm like, you know, like we've had really bad luck with some of these HOHs. Again, Janie was one point away. Kaser was so close. Like, we have really, really, really bad luck. So I'm hoping that like just. We need a little luck to go our way. Ian talked about it when they, when, when at the beginning of the season, Julie was like, what's the number one thing that could impact your game? He was like, luck, you know, like, and it's kind of the same way with the season. The number one thing that can impact the season is luck. We need a little luck to go our way and the power to end up in the right hands for something really awesome to happen this week. And if that happens, then the season can be really, really awesome still. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we've got. You can find me on Twitter at Armstrong Taren. If you ever want to fill one of these surveys out to rate the players yourself, you can find it there on Twitter. Uh, I tweet it out after the update. I pin it to the top of my uh, Twitter account, so it's easy to find if you go to my profile. Um, and then you can also find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Taryn Armstrong. Uh, I'll go over more of the leaderboard in detail on there uh, and talk through my advice on what to do, um, my thoughts on on where I might rate people, where uh, I think you know other people might, uh, where they might end up being. Rated no, he talks and- about where he talks about where me and Melissa are gonna rate our stuff. Like he yeah. tries to use his crystal. <laughs> I ball psychoanalyze. To, yes, he's like, well, Brent's not gonna give that to Tyler. Like, come on, you know, like, come on. So you know, like this is what you guys should do. Like, come on. So if you if you want to know how to play the stock watch, you really should you should watch Taryn's Twitch stream. Also, also uh, you can find me on Twitter at one lucky gay. That's one spelled out O N E. Lavina, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at LPAVS with two S's. That's L-P-A-V-S-S on Twitter. Excellent. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>